Blog Talk Radio. What time is it? WH Radio. I got Skits and Chris. What's going on, guys? Yo. What's happening? What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, we had a decent Raw today. I'm sure that all the listeners just saw it. But um, before we talk about Raw, we have a special guest. Um, before I introduce a special guest, just letting you know he's going to wrestle this Saturday in Wrestling Cares here in California. Um, also, he has a show coming up in Indiana. This Friday, and he also has PWG in a few weeks, back to back days, and also going to make his debut at AWS. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the psycho shooter himself, Drake Younger. What's going on, Drake? Hey, what's happening, guys? I hope you're doing well, and uh, I really appreciate you having me back on here on Wrestling Heads Radio. It's good to be back on with you guys, and and I hope all the fans out there uh, out there are having a great evening so far, man. I hope the PMA is spreading like wildfire. <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely. We're just glad to have you back on. Um, cool. But before, uh, yeah, before we ask you uh, questions, we're gonna, I want to let the listeners know, if you guys have any questions for Drake Younger, tweet us at Wrestling Heads, or you can call us up at 760-454-1107. All right, um, I'm going to ask you my first question, all right? Um, my first question is, this this Saturday, going against DJ Hyde uh, at Wrestling Cares, um, it was not really a question, maybe you can, like, explain to our viewers that uh, that what's going on between you and DJ Hyde. I know you guys are kind of like going at it at um, uh, Wrestling Cares, not the last show, but the show before you got, you got the mic, you said you were saying some couple of crap to him and stuff so can you explain the listeners what's going on between you two guys yeah yeah well first off man <clears throat> the wrestling cares association is just a you know a, a tremendous product it's a very cool concept man i'm really happy to be a part of it um i did i did defeat dj high in the first round um that was in gardena back in june uh and then uh and then i was going up against johnny gargano this past august which was a a big match for me. He was representing Dragon Gate USA. I was representing PWG. We were in SoCal, so I had all my people there, and it was a and it was a really hot atmosphere. And then, you know, DJ Hyde tried to stick his fat face in, in my business where he doesn't belong, and I think DJ's bitter and this that and the other. So um, anyway, it is what it is, and we're going to be scrapping this Saturday in Culver City, California, for the Wrestling Cares. Uh, they also got the semifinals going on. Adam Cole's involved. Johnny Gargano's involved. Uh, it's going to be an awesome night of action. Um, uh, that is in Culver City, and it's also hosted by uh, LA's own uh, former ECW WWE TNA superstar Shelly Martinez, who's who's always just uh, truly a pleasure to be around. A pleasure to be around. So it's going to be an awesome night, man. Yeah, definitely, and um, I'm going to be well, there well, Saturday. I'm sure all my so-called, all my, all my SoCal people, I want to see you there in Culver City on Saturday. Yeah, you see that SoCal? You guys got to be there Saturday. It's Culver City, wrestling cares. You, you guys got to be there. Roll right? call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you guys will not be disappointed. I'm just telling you, I've been to a couple of wrestling cares events. They they're good shows. So I'm telling you right There's now, something for everybody, you won't be disappointed. There's something for everybody. On this it's for everybody. Yeah, let's yeah, just fill yeah. let's fill the place up for these guys. <laughs> All right, Absolutely. I'm gonna go pass and it on. The night, and the night before, um, I'm making a big return to IWA Mid South, which is uh, which is you know my home. Uh, that's in uh, Clarksville, Indiana, right by Louisville, Kentucky. Big big show this Friday night at the Colgate Gym in uh, Clarksville, Indiana. I'm uh, taking on Christian Rose, who's a hot hot young up and coming from the Midwest, who's starting to make a lot of noise. 
Uh, Chris Hero is making his IWA return. He's wrestling Trick Davis. Jimmy Jacobs is on the show. He's wrestling Reed Bentley in a first blood match. Uh, Jack Thriller is on the show. Of course, Ian Rotten and Corporal Robinson are on the show. It's going to be a big, big night. Got Todd Morton versus, uh, um, oh gosh. Uh, man, there's so, there's so many names. I can't even think of them right now, man. It's just going to be out of control. Uh, so, uh, it's real glad that, I'm real glad that IWA Mid South is back. It's going to be nice to be back and, uh, uh, wrestling in front of my Midwest family again. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Kit, you got a question? That sounds like a sh- I was going to say, that sounds like a show that I would love to be at. Too bad it's in the East Coast, and I'm out here in the West. But um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm definitely um, looking forward to seeing um, Drake uh, make his debut at AWS. Uh, he's going to get Absolutely. Little Cholo. Absolutely, against, uh, man. Yeah, yeah um, I want to ask, uh, have you got a chance to catch the Little Cholo stuff, and are you looking forward to... Uh, make your debut. Can you talk about the talk about what we can expect uh, at uh, AWS? Yeah, absolutely, man. Of course, I've got a chance to to, to beat Will Cholo, man. Will Cholo is uh, certainly a legend in the region, man. He's done a lot over the years. Uh, a lot of you, a lot of the fans out there might remember Will Cholo from CW's Best of the Best Three. Uh, he uh, he wrestled B Boy, <clears throat> B Boy and Best of the Best Three. Uh, back in 2003, and Little Cholo is, uh, in addition to being just a just a uh, fantastic person to be around, man, he can really get it done inside the ring. I've been on a, a few Vendetta Pro shows with him, and I'm really looking forward to mixing up with Little Cholo, and I'm looking forward to debuting for uh, for AWS. Um, great product, great product, great atmosphere. Uh, Bart's just a, a super cool promoter, and. Um, and yeah, man, we've been trying to lock lock it down for a while to have me get down there. Scheduling and stuff like that hasn't worked out, but now it's working out perfect. Um, and so we're gonna, you know, close out close out 2013 um, real big at AWS, uh, and that's in uh, that's in Southgate, California, if, I, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah Southgate. Um, Southgate. I was gonna uh, ask you, uh, do you think uh, maybe we can? Uh, um, see you a part of the locker um, in the near future with AWS because we know you do Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Uh, is there a chance you well, can... Well, uh, I'll tell you what, man. I will go ahead and answer that. I have uh, I am confirmed for uh, for the end of January for AWS. I believe it's okay. January the 25th off the top of my head. Um, but that, uh, that's also going to be in Southgate. So we got that. We got that all locked down and everything, too. So, yeah, man, I'm, uh, I'm going to be... Yeah, he's making semi regular appearances at AWS, which I'm I'm very stoked for. Yeah, that sounds good. You know, um uh at the last show that we just went to uh this past weekend, uh they were announcing, you know, that you were gonna make your debut and everybody just starts shouting, Trey, 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 Trey For real? Yeah, so, <laughs> I, I, yeah I, no lie, no, no lie. I was there no too. Lie. <laughs> Dude, right. that's dope. That's so cool, man. Oh, that's awesome. Anybody here that's listening, man, that shows me love or support or, you know, sends me tweets or Facebook messages, man, I really do truly appreciate it. Whenever you guys, you know, go crazy at the shows, man, that's like music to my ears. And uh, it means a lot to me. I know sometimes, like, I don't get the, get the chance to, like, reply to every tweet or message, but uh, trust me, man, I, I do read every single one of them, and each and every single one of them are very near and dear to my heart, and uh, you guys are awesome, man. I, I really appreciate my Southern California wrestling fans. You guys, you know, just really, um, uh, you know, made this place like home for me, and, and I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, man, definitely, man. Uh, we appreciate you uh, coming out and, uh, just um, giving us a great show, and yeah, I, I'm looking forward to everything that's going down in uh, in uh, December with you. Uh, I hear it's so okay. but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pass on the next question to Chris. Go ahead, Chris. What's up, Chris? This Chris. Um, oh, I'm cracking, I, brother. <laughs> you man, <laughs> you for sure. <laughs> uh, I've, I've had the pleasure of seeing you wrestle on both coasts, and. Um, and which brings me to this question. Um, you, you're one of those few guys on the indie scene right now that's had success on both sides, the West Coast and the East Coast. I mean, with CZW, including winning a, uh, the CZW heavyweight title and tournaments 
uh, um, winning heavyweight title from Nick Gage in 08. My question is, how do you, how would you compare the both coast atmosphere, fans, style? Um, there's a you know there's a belief that there is a difference between the two. Um, I was wondering if the, if you had an opinion on that. Uh, well, I can see where some would think that there's a slight difference. Um, whenever I was, you know, whenever I was like working on, working on top at CCW with the title and stuff, it was it was a much different time in my career. I had a much different style and stuff like that, and I was uh, really just going, you know, crazy blood and guts and stuff like that. And um, uh, you know, I in the Philly crowd was was really live and really um, really into the show and stuff like that. Um, I think the the main difference um, in Southern California, as opposed to wrestling on the East Coast and in the Midwest, is man, it's really like it's really uh, particularly PWG. Uh, it's really like this like party atmosphere. It seems like you mm. know what I mean. It's just a mm-hmm. nonstop for like four and a half, five hours of just 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 this big wave of of, of just positive energy. And yeah. uh, like it's like you come out, like well, you know, what I mean, you see Rich Swan and Ricochet come out, dude, and they're, da- oh, yeah. they're dancing. That's uh, not them that, playing a uh, no character. Uh, that's, yeah, that's not that's not them playing a character, man. That's them coming out and just having the time in their life. You know what I mean? You see me come out and like, you know, slap fives with the fans. You see me grinning from ear to ear. That's there's nothing there's nothing you know gimmicked up or 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 uh, character about that whatsoever. That's me being me doing what I love and, and do it in front of the people that make it really worth it. You know what I mean? It's just a really good time. It really is. Um, yeah. I think a lot of times the fans in New York and New, the fans in New York and, and Philly, they're very appreciative of a good, of a good show, but they're very quick. Like if they, if they see something that they're not, that's not up to par or that they don't like, then they're very quick to, to let you know it. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're uh, they're very yeah, tough absolutely. to please, but uh, my you know my fans and fans of Philly have always been really good to me, and I've always had a real good relationship with them. So I think that that might be some guys' uh, viewpoint on on the difference. But you know whether it's Tokyo, whether it's Philly, whether it's Chicago, whether it's LA, um, you know if <laughs> if a true wrestling fan loves wrestling, then then they're gonna let it be known how much they love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Absolutely, and, and like I said, I got to see you in PWG and also in '09 in CZW, uh, best of the best nine against Trent. Uh, oh, cool, nice, nice. And, yeah, I'm glad I got that, to have that match. With, I'm, I'm glad I got to have that match with Trent. Absolutely, man. Yeah, that that is always one of the special matches that I'm fortunate to see live, and uh, that was the first time I seen Very live. Cool. And, and uh, what a hell of a, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Ooh, Thank you, man. Man, I, I tell you what, I really miss the ETW Arena, dude. What a great place to watch wrestling, and and for us performing there, it was just so so cool. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. there, you know, there'll never be nothing like it. And it's it's no. truly a shame that there's not there's not wrestling there anymore. Or I I heard that there might be another show there. I'm not yeah, sure. Extreme I Rise, privy- Extreme Rise, okay, going Extreme Rise is happening there. But I mean, it's a bummer that like I you know I I miss. You know, gosh, we used to wrestle there a couple times a month, some of us guys. Yeah. And, you know, I had the uh, – several months ago, like, I sat down and I counted. Like, I had the, the privilege and the honor of being in a main event in that building 29 times, which is pretty wow. – you know, that's pretty cool for a, for just an indie guy, you know what I mean, to main event the ECW arena that many times. So, yeah, the man, that place, is always, that place is always very special and always very, you know, near and dear to my heart, man. It, it, it is truly the mecca, man, and I, yeah. Hopefully, it gets back to hopefully it gets back to glory where it was. Go ahead, uh, Oscar. Yeah, for sure, man. It's gonna be interesting to see what just what it looks like on the inside. Yeah, definitely. Uh, before I ask, uh, ask my next question, I want to go to our other co-host who just came in, Toby. What's going on, Toby? Hey, Oscar. What's up, Drake? What's up, Toby? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. Um, I'm a little sad I can't I can't see you wrestle coming up here in PWG, but um, it'll be my first show I've missed in like two years. Uh, I just got a new oh, job. Oh man. man. Yeah, okay. Well, hey, dude, you gotta take care of what's important, man. And and you know what? That's the cool thing is uh, the the DVD will always come out, and what's 
cool is the energy from those shows kind of gets translated pretty well on the DVD. Yeah, but it's it's nothing like being there though. It's just like oh, I always God tell my no. God no. Yeah. yeah, I always tell my friends I show them the DVD and I go do the kid. You have to understand the DVD does not do it justice what is like you know just sitting there in the crowd or being a part of that show. It's just it's oh, unbelievable. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, for sure. But let's to keep it on PWG. I believe your first match um, in PWG, at least the first match I ever saw you wrestle, because I didn't know it, I didn't I didn't know anything about Drake was. Uh, it, was you and it was you versus B Boy um, about mm-hmm. a year year and a half ago? That was that your first PWG match? It was, yeah. It was that tremendous three. It That's was right. July twenty first, twenty twelve. Yeah, I don't think anything will ever top that show. That show was just oh, so unbelievable. Right on, man. <laughs> but yeah, right on, man. Yeah, that was my debut, and I was uh, definitely trying to earn a spot. And B Boy was down to go balls to the wall we just kind of went in and went for it brother <laughs> yeah now i heard we had b-boy on the show and i actually asked b-boy about that match because that match to me was just uh it, everyone fell in love with you after that match and i and we talked to b-boy a little bit and I, and I said that he he was saying something about the effect of he was like okay he he came to you you know he goes we're going to do this match he goes if we do this the right way uh this is going to be an epic match, and which is what it turned out to be. Can you tell us maybe a little bit about what into what went into making that match? I mean, because you guys were at one point using no hands and were just cracking skulls, and you could hear your guys' heads headbutt through the whole uh, Legion Hall, and it was just like, oh my god, what are these guys doing? This is this is unbelievable. <laughs> well, but, yeah, we, we were we were kind of in like a. Um, we were in like a tough spot on the card because you know obviously I was like debuting and. Eighty-five percent of the people didn't really know who I was, yeah. and um, Willie Mack had just wrestled Kevin Steen for the title right before intermission. And so you come back from intermission, and you got uh, you got like this unknown dude in, in uh, wrestling b-boy in a singles match. And so like people are still kind of you know uh, coming down from the from the big match with Kevin Steen and Willie Mack. So it's like, oh wow, we really got to we really got to deliver here and. Um, and, you know, and, and the whole day, me and B-Boy were like, dude, let's just go big. Let's just go just do everything that we think we could possibly do to get these people into this match and to, you know, uh, possibly earn me a job. And, you know, I'll, I'll always be indebted to B-Boy, man, because he was down to go out there and just do whatever it took. And, and we're like, fuck it, man, look, look so crazy. And, you know, uh, luckily everything everything went well, and we knocked it out of the park, and, and here I am talking to you guys today, man. Yeah, you definitely for sure knocked it out of the park. That match was unbelievable. It's still one of my favorite. Uh, maybe I think it's because of my favorite because I think it was the first time I ever saw Drake. And you've done so many. Yeah. Every every match. I have never seen a bad Drake match, put it that way. I mean, even even when you just – your wrestling matches, just when there's just wrestling, are, are unbelievable. Like the one you had at Wrestling Cares, um, you know, a couple a couple Wrestling Cares ago. That, you know, there's never a bad Thank match. Thank you, man. But, yeah, I so, really appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, but, yeah. And that, and I think that that added to it is people didn't know what to expect, and they were just kind of like, okay, well, we'll give this guy a shot, and then they're like, whoa, oh man, this is this dude, this this stuff yeah. is crazy, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. so, yep. That's exactly. Uh, uh, go go ahead, Oscar. Yeah, um, before I um, answer my, I'm sorry, ask my next question, I want to let our listeners know, um, if you guys have any questions for Jake Younger, just tweet us at Wrestling Heads or call us at 760-454-1107. He's going to just be with us for another, a couple more minutes, so just letting you guys know. Yeah, I'll stay, but, on. Well, yeah, I'll stay I, on with you guys for a little while, yeah. <laughs> All right, then glad you joined us. But um, I have a question. Someone actually sent me a, a uh, tweet um, to okay. know that what are your future terms of meaning TNA and WWE? I'm guessing he's asking if is, is that in your future as your goal in your future WWE or TNA? Oh, I mean that's always what uh, that's always what we're shooting for. I mean that's the ultimate. Uh, you know that's the ultimate goal for any uh, for any independent wrestler. I mean for the majority of us, so. Um, I, I I would absolutely love the opportunity, man. Yeah, very much so. 
So why not, brother? Why not go for it? You know what I mean? Why the hell not? Right. Yeah. Um. Uh. Before I ask my question, I just want to let that uh, guy who tweeted, or the person that tweeted, Mister Dutchman. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. Yeah, that was that was from him. That was from him. Uh, my next question I want to ask you is about BG. And it's All Star Weekend uh, on December 20th and 21st. But uh, night one against Tomato Champa, and uh, night two is going to be in a six person tag match. You're going to team up with Joey Ryan and Candice LeRae against the Young Bucks and Kevin Steen. I just want to ask you about. Uh, first, I want to ask you about Tomasco Ciampa. What's your thoughts of him, and and have you ever gotten in a ring with him before? Uh, well, I was in the ring with him at the last PWG show in a uh, a four way yeah. with him and Brian Cage yeah. and um, Anthony Nice, and that was just a really exciting match, and um, uh, you know, really um, really hard hitting, and it was really fast paced and. And I got to experience, that was my first time being in the ring with Champa whatsoever. And, man, that dude is intense. Uh, that dude is <laughs> intensity personified. And um, and he's trying to make a name for himself at PWG, man. He's trying to earn jobs. And what better way for him to do that than to, than to step in the ring with me and stuff. And so it's uh, uh, it's going to be exciting, man. It's like I'm on the other side of the fence now. I remember, like, my first few matches in PWG, it was like I was going against, like, all the all the top dogs and, and trying to, you know, trying to make some noise and prove myself. And now, like, it's weird, man. And now, like, I'm one of those guys. And there's, like, newer guys who are coming in and, and, like, you know, they're looking forward to the opportunity to be in there with me and I'm looking forward to, to mixing it up with them. And it's it's kind of crazy how the whole game works, you know what I mean? Yeah, Hello? definitely. I'm, I'm planning to go to the oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, and then the second night, the six man tag, dude. Oh, that's gonna be exciting, dude. I'm I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. I mean, teaming with Candice and Joey against Can- Kevin Steen and the Young Boy, Young Bucks, man, that is huge. Like, as I, I, I'm so excited about getting in the ring with the Young Bucks, and uh, and me and Kevin Steen every time we touch, man, it's always it's always something special. So, um, it's wild, man. You know, I'm in this position now where I'm. You know, I'm wrestling Kevin Steen and the Young Bucks. It's fucking PWG All Star Weekend. Like it's pretty crazy. So anybody, any young wrestler out there, is, you know, just, if there's any advice I could tell you, man, just work hard, stay humble, keep showing up, man, and and the cream will always rise, brother. Good shit will happen to you for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, definitely. I just. I'm planning to go to both shows. Um, I haven't got my night two ticket yet, but uh hope I get it pretty soon. So I, I'm going to be there night one for sure. I already got my ticket for that. But um, <coughs> hopefully soon I get my night two ticket to check out the six-person tag match. Um, all right, then. Go ahead, Chris. Yes. Uh, um, and I'm going to switch it up. I, I'm fascinated. Um, uh, I understand, but I'm fascinated by stories from wrestlers um, of their experiences abroad. And, uh, for example, the video of you uh, having a drink with Bull Nakano, it just blows my mind. Uh, she, to me, she's the greatest <laughs> women's wrestler of all time. That, to me, is insane. My question is, what personally stands out as that, oh, my God, holy shit moment that you experienced traveling outside of the United States? Oh, man, there's there's been so many. But the one that just really comes to mind was um, – about a year and a half ago, just after I debuted in PWG, I, uh, I had the opportunity to, to be in the main event of Cork and Hall for, for Big Japan Pro Wrestling at Padula Kobayashi. And, um, you know, it was just uh, just an awesome atmosphere, dude. I mean, to have to be in a big singles match in Cork and Hall in the main event on national TV and just having the crowd rocking and rolling and I was, you know, I was representing CGW in that match and I had a lot of pride uh, in that fact and, and that I had gotten into that point and, you know, been um, elected into that position. It, it was just, uh, it rocked, man. It was really special. It's definitely one of those moments I'll, I'll remember for, you know, for the rest of my life. It was, it was, a, it was a great roster too. I know recalled it went over at that time as well. Uh, 
um, it's endless of the talent that went along with you. Yeah, first. yeah, it was uh, me, Danny Havoc, Sammy Callahan, man. That's uh, three pretty, pretty cool dudes to go represent CCW, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. Like, go ahead, uh, Toby. Yeah, uh, speaking of uh, Sammy Callahan, you had a, an epic match with him in uh, in PWG. Uh, before he left, I had a few. I had a few very painful matches. With him <laughs> <in PWG. laughs> yeah, the one in uh, there was a uh, yeah. You had a staple gun involved and uh, all kinds of uh, crazy stuff. You actually got busted open pretty bad. Came in the next day and had a good wrestling match with Adam Cole um, with mm-hmm. a bunch of stitches in your in your head. Um, yeah, what what went like? Did you guys when you when you you know plan that all out? Did you did you plan on it going? To that extent, did you really think that it was gonna uh, come over as gruesome as it did, or was that was that? No, on, honestly, we didn't, man. I mean, and, and uh, sometimes, like in the past, when I had done those matches, I knew it was gonna get pretty gruesome, but we didn't know it was gonna go that far, man. That just kind of happened, and uh, we rolled with it and went with it, and luckily there was no super bad permanent damage done, and it. Uh, and in the long run, man, it really um, added to to the next night for me going up when I went set in the ring with for the title. Uh, you know, I mean, I really had really had the people behind me as you know because I was <clears throat> excuse me. Everybody knew that I legitimately went to the hospital there in the San Fernando Valley, and everybody knew that I had a whole bunch of stitches in my head, and, and I was at the hospital till six in the morning, and. And this, that, and the other. So, I mean, and that's the thing about PWG, dude. You, you know, we people have total access to the wrestlers. We're out there talking with the people. We're out there, you know. I, I try to make it a point of, of going out um, in the, you know, in the line before the show and and saying what's up to everybody and just taking a second to say hi and you know thank everybody for standing outside and waiting for so many hours to get inside and and squeezing into the building and, and just bringing so much energy for so long throughout the night. I mean, that's just really awesome, man. It makes our job so much fun, dude. And, uh, you know, and, and, and in doing that, everybody knew that I was I was hurt. Everybody knew I was in a lot of pain, a lot of for real pain, and that I, you know, I woke, I woke up that morning and I was really questioning how well I was going to be able to, to, to perform in that match. And then, like, the crowd, like, legit got me through it, man. That atmosphere just really drove me to um to to get everything that I had and more and, and it didn't hurt that I was in the ring with one of the best in the world, Adam Cole, but you know, that match with Sammy the night before, yeah, I went it went um it was pretty you know, a lot of people it was really disturbing, you know, they uh they told me that they like couldn't even watch just because out of sheer sympathy, man. They didn't like seeing me get hurt like that. And um yeah. And it really uh you know, I, I think in the end it helped it helped things on night two, but it was it was scary, man. It was really scary. Yeah. Uh, my my girlfriend was actually one of the people that came up to you the next night and I think she gave you a big hug and was just like, Are you okay? And you know, she yeah. was legit concerned. I was like you know, I I, I did like I, I knew you were probably not in the best of shape, but you know, on the way home from night one I had to like Tell her I'm like I'm sure Drake will be okay. You'll see him tomorrow, you know. Just yeah. just chill out because I mean she was pretty. Uh, it, it really kind of got to her. I was I was a surprise, you know. It wrestling being a show, it's still very very real, especially something like that. So, but yeah, when she saw you the next night, she was cool and she was just okay, cool. And we're just gonna wrestle yeah. tonight. And the match came out. The match came out really well against Adam Cole, and it was it ended up being, you know, something that was definitely awesome and and. You know, something that I'll never forget seeing in person. You know, just that whole series of uh, you wrestling two nights in a row and just everything that happened. It was uh, such a great show. Um, Thank you, man. It. Yeah. Thank you. For sure. Go ahead, uh, Oscar. Yeah, before I um, ask him my next question, well, I got another question, uh, let's say another tweet from Larry. Um, he's asking that, is there a, 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 any type of match, a style match that, you haven't been in that you like to work with? Like, um, I guess an example, like like how WWE has Hell in a Cell and Last Man Standing. Is there a kind of double match like that you like to work with in the future like you haven't worked in? Oh, man, you know, I, I'll, 
my uh, my my most of my my gimmick match history is is well uh, well behind me. You know what I mean? A lot of you guys know that I retired from the death matches and stuff. But you know what would be awesome, man? Now that you say it, it would be super hell. It would be super cool to do a Hell in the Cell match. <laughs> but you know with what Mark else I would yeah, like I mean, to do? You know what with, else with I would like to do? Yes, I would like to do the um, the old NWA used to have the the the, the bunkhouse stampede matches where they'd have like out of oil with a bunch of dudes and they'd be wearing like their street clothes, like jeans and cowboy boots, and like they'd be like little some little weapons in the ring and stuff, and they're like. Dusty Rose will be crowned the bunkhouse champion. I don't know. I always thought that would be kind of cool, but I guess that's a little too old school for nowadays. <laughs> no, no way. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely not. yeah. yeah. And maybe, maybe, maybe a coal miner's glove on a pole match. <laughs> oh, WCW. I remember that. <laughs> and and, and DiBiase could be the, could be the, could be the man or the ref. That's funny. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And Jake's got the coal miner's glove. Drake's got the coal miner's yeah. glove. You see, see, I did, all, yeah. I did all the, the two hundred light tubes. I did all the barbed wire. Now I want to do the coal miners gloves. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, um, yeah. The guy Larry just tweeted me again. He just gave me a couple of lists of matches. Which one you would like to work on? Either Ultimate Submission, Ultimate X, or the Royal Rumble. Oh shit, Royal Rumble. <laughs> 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 seems like it seems like the biggest biggest match out of those three. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then and all of a sudden a legend pops out, freaking Hulk Hogan comes out and shit. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh all right. Well my next question I want to ask you was it's kinda of related to the WWE. Uh you had your appearance on SmackDown where you and Wright back did a little backstage thing. I just like to know like how does how did all that got together like did the WWE contact you or did you know from someone some from WWE like hey I'm coming to town you should come down and do something in the backstage how did all that well, work man, out I was just uh, I was I was applying for a second job as a stage manager and uh, I got called to do some stage manager job <laughs> in San Jose and then uh, I just, uh, right, uh, right back ruined my job as a one day stage manager and um Joey Ryan just happened to be there applying for the same job, and, and he, he didn't help me out, man. He just stood there and watched. And Ryback, ru- Ryback ruined my, my stage managing job, and so that's why at PW at the Battle of Los Angeles when me and Joey Ryan stepped in the ring, man, I had, to, I had to throw a little revenge on him, man, because he just sat there and he watched me. Watch me, uh, watch me get my ass, ass whipped by Ryback, dude. And Joey Ryan was supposed to be my friend, so that's why we've been fighting so much lately. I took that shit to heart. <laughs> I thought we all agreed. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember uh, that PWG show. You started a feed, feed me more chant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who ended up? Who ended up getting that stage manager job? It wasn't. Oh <laughs> man, <laughs> neither one of us. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't Drake. Couldn't have been Drake. Yeah. We, are, we all agree. <laughs> he would have. He would have killed right Drake. He would have killed right back. We all know that. So we all know that. <laughs> <laughs> I I appreciate the support, fellas. I appreciate the support. <laughs> like all right, then go ahead, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering is there uh, is there a wrestler that you have seen for the first time in the last six months or so that just totally blew you away that you've seen recently? That, that you uh, uh, well. Yeah, well, it's, it, well, as far as a wrestler that's just blown me away every time I've seen him in the ring, and I've seen him since, gosh, 2010, whenever he debuted in CZW, is, is absolutely A.R. Fox. I mean, every time he yeah. goes out there, it's just it's unbelievably mind-blowing, and, you know, he's a friend of mine, and we've gotten a chance to travel uh, through England and Germany together, and, and, you know, as I said, I remember when he first, came up from Atlanta and CCW and just, just for nothing more than an opportunity. And he took it and, and he took the ball and he ran with it. And, you know, he's just been going up ever since. So, uh, A.R. Fox has just absolutely blown my mind. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the cat that used to be the Chiba kid, Andrew Everett out of CCW, he's been doing some really, really, uh, yeah. really spectacular stuff him. as of late. Just yeah, he's him. pretty mind blowing. 
he's pretty mind blowing. Um, um, my my uh, my student Jonathan Crane out of uh, out of uh, out of Indiana, man, he's been making a lot of noise. Uh, that's, that's one of my students, and he's uh, uh, he's re- he's on the come up, and he's hungry, and he's humble, and he's got that PMA. So, um, and that that really you know that really uh, brings some fire out of me too. So, uh, you know, I I mean the the scene is hot with with so many uh, with so many young cats that are that are really. Uh, Really going out there and going for it, dude, and it's uh, it's an exciting time in indie wrestling, that's for sure. Yes, so many stories, many stories started out with he just came up for the opportunity. I mean, and AR yep. Fox, like you just mentioned, mm-hmm. no doubt about it. Um, and that it's that's great to see people achieve what the, you know their goals and then some. You know what I mean? He yeah, just started. very much so. So. Very much so, man. And then there's uh, there's a couple cats out of NorCal that have really uh, really opened opened up some eyes up this way too. Uh, Mr. Athletic Jeff Cobb, who just who relocated from Hawaii, dude. He's he's got a great combination of strength and power and agility. Uh, and he's a legit Olympian. He was in the 2004 Olympics for for amateur wrestling. Um, Virgil Flynn, who I just I had a, a fucking barn burner with at, at Hood Slam. Um, he's he's got some super dope stuff, and he's just uh, he's tough as nails for such a little guy. Uh, Dave Dutcher and I um, had a hell of a ladder match at APW um, up in neighborhood at the APW Garage, and uh, he just really displayed a lot of toughness. And Dave Dutcher has a lot of natural charisma too, and and um, you know, he, his presence really comes off well on the camera, so. You know, Dave Dutra, Virgil Flynn, Jeff Cobb, those are those are some names to, to, to look up and be aware of. In addition to of course uh, Timothy Thatcher and Adam Thornstow. So those are some guys mm-hmm. from NorCal that you might not be familiar with but you should be because they're pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of a few of those guys and I'm looking forward to seeing them more of them. Yeah, Timothy Timothy Thatcher will actually be at the Wrestling Cares on Saturday. Yeah, and I don't know if I, I think I've, I've heard of Timothy Thatcher before. Did the name sounded familiar. Was he at the last Wrestling Cares or? or he was. was he yeah, he's been yeah. on. All, he's been on all the Wrestling Cares, and then uh, uh, previously he'd done some stuff at uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood too. It's really, it's actually really hard to keep track of, of who the Wrestling Cares guys are because it's kind of everyone puts on such a good job for that promotion that there's not a bad match. It's just it's it's. Right. it's, it's it's, it's it's constant action all the way through, which is to me wrestling cares is is second to PWG. That's how great it comes off. Uh, it's just yeah, such a it great is. show. It really is. And, and you know the guy the guy behind the scenes who's um, helping put the matches together is Nigel McGinnis. So I mean that that's a lot. That that shows you a lot right there, man. He's very passionate about the product, and and um, it shows it shows through when we go out there and perform for him. Yeah, it's it's great. Like I said, there's no. It's everyone puts on such that good show that there's no dead spots that it's just it, mm-hmm. it's it's, it's kind of like everything is just watching one big three hour wrestling match it's 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 awesome <laughs> yeah. in a way um, but Drake I, I wanted to ask you about you've been wrestling a little bit in IWL and I guess the uh, future of it is up in the air because Vic Luna hasn't announced anything about what's going on. With the with the company, but you've been wrestling in it for a little while now. I think probably a li- yeah uh, about a year or so. Um, you had uh, your first match in IWL that I saw was you versus Ray Rosas, and it was an Anarchy match, and it was in Chino, yeah. California. That's actually yeah. like three minutes away from my house. So yeah, um, but there was a. I remember you guys were on second to last. And I remember looking at the card, and I saw that match, and that one match that you versus Ray Rosas, and I said, oh, my God, how does this match not go on last? Like, no one is going to be able to follow this match. And you guys put on such an unbelievable show that, like I said, the main event just couldn't follow it. It was just, it, it was unbelievable. And I remember I went to Vic right after the show, and I said, Vic, you need to put Drake on last now. And he goes, yeah, I know. And uh, <laughs> but you had some. Can you talk about some of your matches that you had? Because you had you had that match with Ray where you guys brought in the Cinder Block, and then you had a 
a match with you and B-Boy versus Ray Rosas and Eric Cross where you guys had an, yes. an awesome match. And um, that match actually did go on last. Uh, I yeah, think. yeah. But he did, yeah. We, we, we main evented above John Morrison and the Young Bucks. Vic you listened did. to you so much that we had to, do, we had to go on after John Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was. You know, I said the same thing too. Was, you know, just, you need to put Drake on last. You know, put John Morrison on second to last. That's just because. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, can yeah, you that tell was us a little fun, bit about that? That was a fun match. That was a fun match, man. Yeah, and um, uh, and in that second match, Eric Cross really, uh, really, you know, he brought out his toughness, man. He took like a sunset flip powerbomb off the top rope on the shopping cart. I think he like separated some ribs or something like that, and he was all smiles after the match, dude. He didn't care. He was just. He just wanted to do the best that he could for the for IWL and um my matches with Ray Rosas are always just an absolute blast. I could wrestle Ray Rosas seven days a week. I think he's so so great, so underrated, such a great worker, great person. Um and he's uh, you know, very very talented in so many ways. Like if this was like the old territory days, like him and I would go around the loop and we'd like We'd wrestle. We'd wrestle Tuesday through Friday. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like yeah. it'd be a blast. But uh, Ray Rosas is is, is he's, he's awesome, man. And then um, uh, him and I also had a uh, a thirty minute Ironman match for IWL that took place at the Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy. Um, uh, and that was uh, when they were doing the un- unhinged tapings, and that's actually on YouTube. Like if you if you like YouTube, Drake Younger versus Ray Rosas IWO, like that'll pop up on one of their shows. And I remember that was in the middle of July, um, right? You know, in the middle of Bell Garden, like in this small warehouse, dude. It was you know burning up, and we just went out there and wrestled for thirty minutes, and, and then they did like a sudden death gimmick, and so like. We went like five more minutes, so it was uh, that was you know that was cool. That gives you a lot of sense, of, you know, a big sense of pride as a worker when you're able to go out there like that. And and Ray was just an absolute pleasure to do that with. And as I said, he's such a such a pro and such a you know such a great worker, man. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and look up that match right now. Great, I've always had great times at IWL. Always had, uh, uh, you know, I I really love. Love the shows with that company, and um, they always treated me well. And, you know, you know, they always you know flew me down and and got me a nice hotel room and stuff. So no, it's a cool company, man. I really really appreciate that DBL, That's for sure. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Oscar. Yeah, I wanted to ask him about. Um, I was gonna ask you about. <laughs> um, All right, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> go ahead, I'm Chris. Ready. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, and I, I'm I'm not coming out to California um, till like spring um, to see uh, for you out there. My question is, do you have anything booked that's beyond Indiana, uh, like uh, you know, past Ohio, you know, the Northeast? I was wondering if you have not anything at the, booked in the future. Not at the moment, brother. Not at the moment, brother. Unfortunately, I do not, man. I've only taken bookings up through January at this moment. I'm going to start taking stuff for February here pretty soon. So. Oscar, you ready? Because I can keep going. Yeah, I'm ready. I just got a little sidetrack. Um, okay. I was gonna ask okay. him that: Is there an opponent that you, that you, like a dream opponent you have, like either somebody in currently in the WWE roster, TNA roster, or any some any indies you haven't got to, yet to work with? So, like, is there anybody that you love to work haven't worked with yet? Uh, I always wanted to have a match with Homicide. I always thought that'd be pretty cool, but. Um, it just it just never happened in a singles match for some reason, but um, but yeah, man, there's just, just you know there's a lot of guys I'd love to mix it up with, man, for sure. But that's that's one that comes to mind as far as somebody who's on the indies that I'd like to work with. Well, I know Homicide did PWG shows in the past. So I remember he had a yeah. match with uh, he teamed up with D Boy against the Briscoes, and it was another tag team. I'm yeah. trying to remember. I'm trying to remember, right. but he done PWG shows in the past. Um, cool. If you want, if you want, we, we've done this in the past. For like, we used to blow up the PWG Twitter account. Like, hey, we want these oh. guys at PWG. And then, uh, if we could say we want Drake oh, Younger no, from man. Homicide, I don't, I don't think we need to we do that. We can follow the man. shit out of them. We can uh, do that for you if you want. Too, 
It's, su- it's Super D. I think Super D knows what he wants to do with me, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hopefully it means a title. I was going to say, hopefully that means that means the title. I mean, because, Jesus, I think, yeah, man, it was a couple shows ago, I yelled out, and you, you just basically killed yourself again, uh, putting on another epic match. And it was, uh, you were in a title match with someone, and I, and I, I don't exactly remember the PWG. Oh, was it that means, the, 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 uh, I've had two title matches. I had the one with Adam Cole where I had the hole in my head. Yeah. And then I had the, uh, and then it was me, Cole, and Kevin Steen in um, the beginning of August. That's uh, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we had a three-way. Yeah, and you, you uh, ended up, you know, putting on an awesome match, and I remember at the end of the match I yelled out, I was like, the hell does Drake got to do to win the title around here? And <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm wondering, man, I'm wondering. <laughs> so that's what I was saying, hopefully, hopefully Super Dragon has you uh, in the title soon, but, I mean, what, what Adam Cole and... and company are doing right now is awesome too but um, absolutely man absolutely yeah i'm you know, I'm just happy, happy to be a part of the company and contribute any way that i possibly can man so yeah it's it's, it's great to be in the position that i'm in that's for sure man i really yeah. appreciate the support yeah no problem go ahead chris yeah. um you mentioned that you, you um well we all know you have the iwa mid-south um show coming up um and by the way, I forget forgot to mention Ricochet versus uh, Gresham as well. Be on that card. Oh my um, God! Yeah, that's going to be incredible. Yeah. yeah, and my question is, in in, in this, and in, in, I was wondering your feelings about this guy. I mean, who it's either positive or negative to work for. I mean, every time uh, this this man is mentioned uh, on this show and other shows, um, is Ian Rotten. I was wondering if you could, uh, you know. Tell your feelings of Ian, how he has meant for uh, for you um, throughout your career. Yeah, man. Ian Ian's always been Ian's always been really good to me. He's uh, one of my trainers, and um, he was the first to give me an opportunity to on like a a pretty big stage. And he like pushed me like and believed in me when I didn't really you know have any confidence in myself. And you know he put me in the ring with Loki and Roderick Strong and and you know all these awesome hot stuff. Is all these awesome workers when I didn't really deserve it, you know, just because he saw something in me, and um, and that that gave me the opportunity to uh, get noticed and get some international work and stuff like that. And um, yeah, no man, he's he's always been good to me, man. He's always I've always, always working for him, and I'm really excited that IWM Mid South is back and. Uh, but when the TPI got canceled, that that hurt, you know what I mean. But uh, but anyway, we got the show going on December six, and it's a big show, man. It's called the Big Ass Christmas Bash, so it uh, sounds like a pretty cool name for a show for me. So yeah, man, totally. Uh, I'm stoked, man. And um, as far as I mean, you know, Ian's concerned, he's always been good to me. How is he doing? I mean, I saw that that post he had that he he. I heard he had. Uh, he, he, he seems to be, okay? seems to be doing. Seems to be doing good, man. He's, uh, you know, he's he's excited about running shows, and he's going to be wrestling again. So, uh, I mean, there he seems go. to be doing well enough. So, there you go. That's good. Good to hear. Go ahead, Austin. That's good to hear. Well, yeah. Well, actually, I got another tweet from another listener. Um, I don't. I cannot say his uh, Twitter name, but I, I know his name is Mike Wilson. He wants me to ask Drake. I know you did a, um, a non non televised event for Championship Wrestling for Hollywood. Are you going to be doing any future shows for Championship Wrestling from Hollywood? Oh man, that was that was a really fun time, and uh, I wrestled Joey Ryan there, and it was awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah it's an awesome company, and really really fun to work for. And um, these, uh, uh, I, I don't have anything set in stone with them. Um, but from both sides, my side and their side, they're, we're you know we were both very uh, very happy to work with each other, and um, uh, I'm sure there there could be something in the future that could happen there. Um, it just it just all boils down to scheduling and uh, logistics and stuff like that. But Jim uh, uh, in Hollywood's a, a great company, dude. Great locker room, and uh, that was a really really fun show to be a part of. Super professional company to work for, and you know Dave Marquez, Angela Trinidad, the guys. 
the guys down there, they're, they were, uh, they're, they're cool people, man. I was, uh, I really appreciate me, them having me on there. Yeah, definitely. I was at that show, and then uh, I enjoyed your match with Joey Ryan. Um, I have to say, that was probably the best match of the night. Yeah, it was almost like oh, a PWG match, man. pretty much. You know, you guys went yeah. over the freaking place. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. We went, we went pretty wild, and like we were like, hey, let's. Uh, I guess we gotta like, we can't really do no, you know, much comedy in this one. So let's just let's let's, let's wrestle. So, <laughs> we, so we did. Yeah, definitely. Well, I have one more final question before cool. um, before wrap But my last question is, what will you be doing? What will you be doing in five years? What do you think you're going to be doing in five years? Do you still think you're going to be doing the oh, Indies man. or something bigger? <laughs> uh, you, you know, I, I, I don't really know if I can answer that. All I know is I, um, in five years I want to be uh, uh, happy and healthy and um, and uh, with with my with my beautiful family. I have my second child on the way. I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a little son this upcoming spring. Uh, so uh, as long as I'm happy and healthy and with my family and and whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm doing it, just being passionate about it and loving it, and um, that's that's where I see myself in five years. All right, definitely. Oh. Um, we actually hopefully have a caller. Hopefully you there'll be. On that. Charles, I, we have a caller on the line. You want to take a call, uh, Drake? Sure, man. I can take a call. Let's do it. All right then. Second. 909 Area Code, you're live on Wrestling Heads Radio with Drake Younger. What's going on? Hey there, how's everybody doing tonight? What's going doing on? Well. How you doing, buddy? Comic-Con. Yeah, it's Captain Comic Con. <laughs> I'm, I'm driving right now, but I, I have it all on Bluetooth, so it's alright. Stay safe, safe. I'm wrong. <laughs> well, you sound good, so ah, go ahead. We got Drake here. Drake Younger, how are you doing tonight, my friend? I'm doing well, brother. How are you? I am doing great. It could always be worse, right? Absolutely, man. Absolutely, brother. It's good, it's good to be alive another day, my friend. Awesome. Awesome. I do have a question. Yeah, what's uh, up? My, my question is, have, have you ever gone against uh, Mick Foley or Terry Funk? Uh, no, I have not. That, that's... Uh, uh, Cactus Jack was certainly one of my idols growing in, in my teens. Cactus Jack and Sabu were were huge influences in in my career, and um, uh, yeah, man, there was those were they were always like you know idols to me coming into wrestling, man. So that would have been awesome. My my, I got one more question. Yeah, man. All right, if, if if you were if you were given a choice to either wrestle. Mick, or Mick Foley as Cactus Jack or have a world heavyweight title shot, which one would you take? All right. Uh, just to make sure I got the question correct, I could either wrestle Cactus Jack or wrestle for the world title? Yeah. Oh, man, go for the world title, for sure. <laughs> Who the hell doesn't want to be the world champ? <laughs> you, <know? Yeah. laughs> you never know. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Some people would no, give man. Up I, 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 would, I would definitely want to be the world champ. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure the uh, I'm sure the paycheck that would come with that match, the world title match, would be pretty hefty too. So, yeah, <laughs> big time, big time. Can't argue with that. Not, Can't not, argue with yeah, that. Yeah, just I mean, just, in addition to the you know <laughs> being able to wrestle for the world title, just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, I'll thanks for the question and thanks for calling in, man. Thank you. Cool, brother. All yeah, right. thanks. Yeah, thanks again, uh, Captain Comic Con, for calling in. Uh, right now, I'm going to put you on mute. So, yeah, all right. Well, thanks for calling in again, man. Thank you. All right, then. Any all more right, calls, then, Oscar? Uh, any, no, no, I got no any more calls. Um, you guys got okay. any final questions, Chris? I, I, I have a. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to. Um, I'm not going to ask a question, but I'm just going to say uh, to reiterate what what Oscar says. What you'll be doing in the next five years, hopefully. You'll be on your four and a half year title reign and uh, world title reign for PWT. That's what I hope. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's my man, um, dude. Hell yeah. Well, that's cool. Hopefully that's what's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, or yeah. 
Or get or getting that Hell in a Cell match. That's that's what I hope. So. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to just oh, speak yeah. to you and to you. So uh, you always you always got a fan here. So yeah, that, I, that means a lot, man. I appreciate I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate you having me on, dude. I'm I'm glad I was able to do it. And I had some uh, I squeezed in some extra time, so you know, it's a, it's always a good deal, man. Uh, you guys mind if I plug a couple things real quick? I got yeah, you on it. Yeah, uh, as as with some of the other guys that you that you hear here on Wrestling Heads Radio, man, I do have a I do have an online T-shirt store. I got a few designs on there. If you go to prowrestlingtees dot com slash drake younger, um, there's about four or five this is, uh, slick designs to choose from, man. Uh, you know, uh, something for everybody, and you can order them in any style you'd like. They're great stocking stuffers, man, and you know we get we get profits from those, and um, you know we, we as independent wrestlers we're responsible for making our own merchandise and stuff like that. And this is great for us, um, and so um, uh, we appreciate any and all support. There's also you know these shirts from so many other awesome wrestlers on that website. So browse around, man, and uh, if you don't buy a t-shirt from me, buy it from somebody to support you know independent pro wrestling. Uh, also, uh, just recently released from High Spots is the Kevin Steen Show featuring myself. Um, that's uh, that was a fun time. I sat down with Kevin Steen, and uh, we had a we had a heart to heart interview. We had some good times, good talks, good laughs. Uh, so uh, you know, if you're interested in that, man, it's definitely worth picking up. Also on SmartMarkVideo.com, um, you can search uh, search my name on there, and there's my uh, best on the indie series from. Um, uh, from my death match days and stuff like that, and has some stuff matches with Daniel Bryan and and um, and Antonio Cesaro on there. I got volumes one, two, and three on there. The best on the Indies, Drake Younger. Uh, I do get uh, I do get uh, profits and residuals from those. So any support any support on that end is definitely appreciated, man. Uh, but whatever you do, just continue to support independent wrestling and and uh, and yeah, man. Uh, I you know I, I genuinely. And grateful for everybody's support and for, um, you know, as I said, for all the messages, tweets, uh, emails, stuff like that. And um, whenever you guys see me at shows and whenever you take a second to just stop by and, and say what's up and, and tell me that you appreciate my work, man, that means the world to me and it means the world to a lot of wrestlers that do what we do, man. So thank you guys so much. And I really appreciate you guys here at Wrestling Heads. You guys have uh, been supportive of me ever since I first came around the West Coast, man. So thanks, guys. Thank you. No, oh, thank you, Drake. Cool. It's awesome. Yeah, All right, good guys. to have, have you on night. again, Drake. Hey, yeah. Have a good night. And uh, before, before we let you go, do you want to give out your Twitter or other social media access? Yes, 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 yes. You can hit me up on Twitter at DrakeYounger317. All right. All right, hey. then. Uh, All, right. All right, Drake. Take care of yourself, all right? Thanks, guys. Peace. Take care. Uh, I was, was going to say see you in a couple weeks, but I'm not going to be there, so. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> that was Drake Younger, everybody. Um, he was a great guy. I'm, I'm planning to see him four times this month. That's freaking crazy. Um, and that's stuff you're going to miss out, Toby. I mean, yeah. I know. How I lucky are you, you, dude? Stuff. That's lucky. That's, like, crazy. <laughs> four different He's shows. those, yeah. He's one of those guys um, who are, who's legit loved on both sides of the wall, you know, the fans and the wrestlers. There's only, and there's only a few guys that come to mind, like Paul London, the same way, just respected universally. And um, it's good, you know, and he's fucking positive as shit. And it, I you know, hope big fucking things happen more for him, you know. Yeah, it is. Paul London, yeah, that's, you brought up a good point with him. I mean, he is, uh, for for... For whatever reason, it just yeah, it's just it, there's just something about him that you, as soon as he comes through the curtain and he starts, you know, giving high fives to everyone, there's just something that draws you to the guy. Um, it's just it's it's Drake's just sad. That, yeah, it's Drake is exactly the same way, and it's just sad that WWE can can get these guys, and it just not come off the same on TV at all, or they just don't know how to use them. It, it's just yeah, it sucks. Just said it. You just said it. Right there. It's all in a nutshell. They don't know how to use them. You know? Yeah. But maybe yeah. someday. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, I want to take a little commercial break, and uh, when we come back, I have an announcement to make. 
And um, yeah. All right then. You're we'll be right back. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm pregnant. Hey, what's happening, guys? This is Psycho Shooter Drake Younger from Pro Wrestling Gorilla. You are tuning in to Wrestling Heads Radio, baby. Four Quarters Radio is the home for the best professional wrestling and independent wrestling. Discussions and coverage. Billy, Ant, Martin, and Sam bring you three of the best podcasts every week. The Four Corners Raw Roundtable, the Indie Project, and the Saturday Freestyle. Along with the podcast, FourCornersWrestling.com is designed with all wrestling fans in mind. Future articles, videos, the weekly shows, and much more. Four Corners and Wrestling Heads are teaming up to bring you wrestling's next revolution. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. We all ready. I have we're ready to make this announcement right now about Wednesday's show. Wednesday, people. Well, if you guys uh saw our tweet earlier this morning, we tweeted that we have a guest on Wednesday and our guest will be the current involved champion, AR Fox, who will be joining us here on Wednesday. And not only AR Fox, we also have another guest. We're gonna bring back David Jackson from Wrestling Cares. He will also be joining us. This Wednesday as well. You guys don't want to miss that out. We're going to talk about the Wrestling Cares event on Saturday. So you guys don't want to miss out. AR Fox and David Jackson this Wednesday. Pretty busy show. Um, yeah, pretty busy show. Yeah, I'm right. Um, all right, let's let's talk Raw. Uh, Chris, you, 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 did you enjoy Raw today? Because I tried a little bit. I oh, was a little happy. I loved it. I loved it. Oh, it was. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, maybe I should hang up right now because I haven't watched it yet. I just barely got home. Well, you like, know, you got to stay here. on. You're not hanging up. You hang up. You're not hanging up. Okay. Well, yeah, but if something <laughs> much happened, predict. I don't want to, like, ruin it. Like, if fucking well. Vince McMahon wrestled Stone Cold or something, I'm going to hang up the phone well, right now and go watch it. <laughs> well, first of all, Epic, come on. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Uh but you're not hanging up. But um, but this was the best <laughs> Raw in weeks, if you agree with me. I mean, I well, I what I like what Raw I like week. about it, what I like about it is that they're they're trying. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, they're trying. Well, it's wrestling um, coming up, so I wish I, I do like the fact that they they gave the Shield a long long fucking match um, once again. Um, workers get a long match, and um, that, I mean I, things like that I enjoy. Um, but the, the Daniel Bryan thing, I think some people have seen coming for a while, um, a possible uh, alliance with the Wyatts. But you know what I mean? Like Ray is going to try to you know persuade him. I mean that angle's been done a million times, but I think this one could be legit. It's just another thing that they're going to hand hand Daniel Bryan, and he's going to turn to gold. Either way. That he picks. I mean, it would be spectacular if he switches. But um, yeah, I mean, it's better than what's been put on TV, you know, recently. Oh yeah. Huh. Yeah, I mean, you, you forgot another thing. They are actually trying to make the Intercontinental kind of more relevant again. Like, like Chris, well, we'll or both of you guys, Toby. When was the last time you've seen a number one contender match for the Intercontinental title? Mm. Wow. I oh god I don't even know. You know, know what I, like you know Razor what I like Ramon maybe I don't know like it's been out <laughs> a while. You know what I liked about that is four fucking months ago, four fucking months ago, no one hundred percent Ziggler would have got that pinfall. It would been an obvious fucking match against his former protege, fucking Dolph Ziggler, Biggie Langston. That would that is that was so what WWE would have done one hundred percent. The fact that they did not do that is very promising. The fact that they fucking swerved a little bit and fucking put Sando on top. That was fucking, you know, that's that's promising. You know what I'm talking about. Very predictable bullshit that they were doing for a while. Well, they've been um, having great matches over the last couple of weeks, too. I mean, I've been I've been watching those. Those have been um, just, I mean, and they've, the been gimmick, they've been gimmick matches, you know, not, but they're, they've been kind of, Inter- they've at least been entertaining to watch. The crowd seems kind of dead, but they've at least come off entertaining on television. So, um, Ziggler and, and Sandow, but yeah. Um, well, what they what they even have? They had like last week. They were I don't even remember now. Anyway, they like garbage all over the ring or something, and then they had like a musical instrument brawl or yeah. I don't I don't know whatever. Um, yeah, again, I mean, gimmick matches. 
I mean, it's sort of funny how far Ziggler uh, is, is, is falling into the doghouse, and he's got to be the, the third member of the Curtis Axel Ryback tag team. They're, they they got to be a faction soon. You know what I mean? And then uh, <laughs> the, the three men in the doghouse, whatever they're going to call them. But, uh, what? Yeah. Okay. Now, what do you guys think is going on with Dolph Ziggler? Because as, as I've said a hundred times, I don't believe anything anymore that I read or hear. So what do you actually think's going on? Why Something's going on. It's, it's, it's good. I, I think I think what fucking happened is definitely what I've been saying for about fucking six, seven, eight months. They give this fucking guy. I mean, you know how personally I feel about him. I mean, I think he's a little bit overrated. But they give this guy fucking gold, and he fucking spits out fucking quarters. The dude. I mean, great. He bumps like I said. The great. He fucking you know. Yeah. He could take he a suplex. Bump. He could take. He could take a suplex like he got shot like a machine with a machine gun. Okay, I'll give him that. He but makes it look good. They hand him these storylines, and they hand him fucking AJ Lee. They hand him the world title. They hand him this. They hand him that, and it doesn't draw dick. It, and it won't. And maybe they're finally seeing it, which is promising. I, you know yeah, I, mean? I think that's more what's going on. I think you you hit it more on the head than what's going on with you hear rumors about the whole Jerry Lawler shit, and they're blaming him. Why are you gonna blame nah. a guy fucking two years nah. later down the road for? For yeah, giving no. elbow drops, like why would they be punishing him now for yeah. that? They would have punished him then. It comes down, it's, it comes and, down to believing. It's the same thing with Ryback. They handed him fucking gold, fucking bricks, and he gave him poop bricks. Yeah. If the dude's not, if the dude's not going to draw money, more than ever, the WWE don't have fucking time for you. Back in the day, they would wait, they would waste fucking time with you. Like fucking, for example, what they're still doing with Wade Barrett, but they fucking are, you know, they're balls to the wall. Fucking sending dudes on, you know what I mean? Getting Curtis Axel started off hot. Two weeks later, nobody gave two shits. They handed him the fucking Lamborghini, Paul Heyman. They handed him the fucking Lamborghini, his dad's legacy. They handed yeah. him a fucking IC title, the fucking Lamborghini. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't yep. get over a fucking fence. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking about the IC title, I'm 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 liking what they're doing now. Like, okay, I know Vicky Langston was doing the commentary during that match, but he did brought up like I'm I'm glad my name is in the list of guys like Stone Cold Steve Austin, Ricky Steamo, and legends that won yeah. the title. I'm I'm hoping that if he keeps bringing it up every week, that that title could mean yeah. something again. And now the world title could be out of the picture. You know, well, WWE could make that belt a secondary title. You know. Now so, first thing. First things first, you know that's not going to happen. They're, 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 not, they're not just going to fucking end this at TLC. I, I highly fucking doubt it. There's no way that they're, this, this is going to continue somehow, this world heavyweight title unification. It just doesn't make sense. Are they going mean, to, so, are, is that what's going on right now? Because I, I heard I got the tweet earlier today that says they're signing the contract for Randy Orton. Versus yeah, yeah well, they're, they're, they're supposedly, signing. they're going to have a ladder match, bullshit gimmick match for the fucking, to unify the titles. Basically, the men got to go up there and grab both belts. And I threw it out there, and a lot of people have. This fucking Randy Orton will grab the, the fucking World Heavyweight title, and Cena will grab the fucking WWE title. You know what I mean? Totally do a fucking... But, but, totally do a 180. No, you and, know what? By watching Raw, you know, I don't think that's going to happen. By watching tonight's Raw, I don't think it's going to well, happen. It's just, I heard I'm just throwing it out. I'm just throwing it out. Well, I don't, my point is, do you honestly well, think I, I, that they're going to fucking unify the belts? I hope so. I think everyone wants it. Like, there's no... Might as well, yeah. We, yeah. I mean, no there's no legit have, champion right now. There's no legit champion, and well, if they are building up the IC title, it does seem like they're gonna they, they might actually fucking do it. If you got one well, number one, well, if they're gonna do it, if they're gonna do it, they gotta make it the biggest moment. And the way to make it the biggest moment is fucking Cena take them fucking belts and join Triple H and yeah. stuff. That will make that <laughs> a fucking moment. That will make oh, that a man. fucking moment of fucking all hell and beyond. They I'm keep out. saying that this is gonna be a legendary. They're naming all these dudes: Pat O'Connor, Luke says. Fucking gotcha! All these fucking former dudes. Well, you want a big moment? There it is. There it is. It'll set motherfucking WrestleMania season on its ear. Yep. If I, uh, I like up. that idea. Pittsburgh will Chris, I like that idea, but I doubt that's gonna happen. I see Cena winning the damn thing, but I, I cannot see him turn heel. I just can't see it happen. Well, so far, so so far, you disagreed with me twice. That's awesome. I love it. But anyway, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think? I mean, you you disagree a lot. What do you think's gonna happen? Put a scenario out I, there for all of us to hear. I just think, of course, they're going to give Cena the damn undisputed title. They, that's their poster boy. They're going to give it to Cena. He ain't going to lose the title to WrestleMania, so that's that's what I think. And well, can't, wait for, that. can't wait for that. 
I know, I can't wait for that too. And the Intercontinental is going to mean something because they're finally doing something that involves a storyline with the Intercontinental. It doesn't start till like the Raw before the pay per view. They're still two weeks away from this pay per view, so this rivalry team, Biggie Langston and Damian Santa, could do something this week on SmackDown because they're actually making SmackDown watchable again. And then continue on a roll. That's what I want to see. Not no freaking one week in the match and now it's, oh, we have an Intercontinental match this Sunday in the interview. No, no, no. They're, they're going to have to continue the storyline. That's what I want to see about the Intercontinental title. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. Yeah, well, I, I think that's, that Biggie Langston is going to end up being a feud with Mark Henry down the road, too. But that's another story. But uh, we'll see. I mean, yeah. I mean, if they're just going to go with the as is one champion and it's going to be Cena, well, you better bring up a fucking, uh, you know, a glorious storyline for that next day on Monday because it's going to be bland as fuck. It's going to be bland as fuck. What's Randy yeah. Orton going to do? On that? What's Randy Orton going to do on that Monday after he loses? Cry? Stuff yeah. That's you know what I'm saying? Now, you want to fucking set Rus- or Royal Rumble on its ear? You got motherfucking WrestleMania 30 coming. You have the WWE Network coming. Motherfucker, get your buy rates up and do something ballsy. You know what I mean? This is the fucking unification of two world titles. Let's fucking go. I mean, who's that guy in the locker room? Oh, Cena will be. Cena's going over. We're going to have a blase Raw going into the Rumble. Hmm, what else should we do? It's 30th anniversary for Raw. Uh, no, Cena on top. That sounds awesome. Let's yeah, change it up. That's, that's, let's, let's, I, that's what I would love to do if I was all creative, but the thing is, though, WWE doesn't have the balls to put Cena as a heel because he's the one who's marking the kids. The, they're making the money of the kids. You see, the kids are making the parents buy more money to t- to see them a ticket. Well, they're basically buying three aren't tickets. Those kids, aren't those kids 25 years old yet? You know what I'm saying? No, aren't those yet. kids 25? <laughs> yeah, but they're uh, new Cena kids. I don't know. It seems like the WWE cares more about Make-A-Wish and charity, which is which is fine if they want to go that route. I'm not nothing against it, but they care more about that and keeping Cena baby face for stop? that. Than who said he's going to stop? It's so K. It's so K. is so it's, broken. It's the same. Yeah, but he can still same, do that. Yeah, it is. It's so. I agree with you what you just said, but I mean, it, every kid gets their heart out of it. I mean, we all got our hearts ripped out when. Hogan leg drop Macho Man. Yeah. I, I, did, I still don't believe that actually happened. I still think Hogan made a mistake there. You didn't. He didn't. Didn't know what he was doing. Um, but guess what, Toby? Yeah, guess what, yeah. Toby? You, huh. be, you became a hell of a, you, you you made it through life and you became a hell of a man. You still <laughs> yeah. made it through life and you made it to this far. You didn't. You didn't <laughs> jump off a bridge. And Hogan's bigger than Cena. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, See, there's another problem right broke. there. All these there's kids. There's another problem right there. You mentioned up. Hulk Hogan. Late Johnny Macho Man, and that happened in WCW. That didn't happen in WWE. WCW had the balls to do it. WWE never had the balls. See, Bret Hart enough. didn't turn heel to his last moment in WWE. You see? Well, he had to. Well, yeah. that was the crowd turned on him. He didn't really, um, you know, turn on. Yeah, the crowd it, did it turn on. Look, they did. The, the crowd did turn on him, but they could have done the whole Cena route. The, Bret Hart couldn't have done the first Cena route. You know, he's been the baby face, but the crowd still booed him. Bret Hart could have been the first one, but I guess that that's, they decided, okay, let's just let's just put Bret Hart as a heel, and we're having this new WWE attitude thing going on. Let's just have Stone Cold be the face of our company with the whole attitude well, era. You yeah, think? I I think the attitude era though, the fans had more of a say so on what went on in the product versus nowadays. I think the attitude era, the fans basically said we want Stone Cold that's who came on TV we want this that's what that's what's going to happen versus the now era which is kind of it's just the WWE machine popping out whatever they want to pop out it has nothing to do with with you know what the fans want anymore really well I got news for you if they don't do an oh my god moment in the next four months leading up to the WWE Network debut and WrestleMania 30 and this rumble um I have no faith in that promotion whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? I, I won't. And turning Daniel Bryan heel is not big enough, or whatever they got planned. Something's got major's got to happen. Something fucking major. See, that's the thing is, I don't think there's just there's not a need for heel and baby because there's like you said, kayfabe's gone. So there's not a need for heels or baby faces or anything like that anymore per se in wrestling it's just really let these, 
let these guys be themselves. And that's what will get over the best on television. I think if you believe this guy is the way he is, whether he wants to act like a... If, say, he's like an asshole in real life, let him be an asshole, but make him be ten times of more of an asshole, uh, you know, what he is in real life versus on character. Let him be bigger than, than life. and it, it Just let them be themselves. But the thing is, that, that's what's up. killing UFC right now. That's what's killing UFC right now. They're letting them be what they want, and there's no over-the-top fucking people. You know what I'm saying? You could let a certain few people be themselves. You can't let everyone be themselves. You know what I'm trying to say? It's impossible. You can't let Damian Sand- Sandow be himself because he's probably boring and he's probably dumb. But <laughs> I believe his, I believe a, Sandow is really like how he is on television. It seems like he would be like that. I don't I don't know how. You think he's, he's actually life. from Palo? You actually think he's from Palo Alto, California, no. and he's got a robe because he's a scholar. No, I, I don't believe that. But I mean, it's, he plays it off so well that you know he can he can do that. But I mean, do you really believe that Stone Cold the character versus Stone Cold the actual person are two different people? Yes, I think no. First of all, I think Damian Sandow and Stone Cold are two different people, and I wouldn't compare them whatsoever. I wouldn't even feed them the same meal at dinner. That's how much I don't, you know what I mean. I wouldn't even compare that. Yeah. No. But <laughs> that's uh, but that's what I'm saying is you you believe the Rock. The Rock is the Rock because it's just you just believe those characters are who they are. Um, it seems like they need to do that more. And they don't do that. They're they're going back to the 1980s, early 90s gimmick, you know, style of we're going to create these stupid, over the top characters, you know, that are unbelievable, and you know, just let them be themselves in a way. Yeah. It's not. It's not. I mean, the only one that's you gotta get. have. You gotta have heels. You gotta have heels. You gotta have over the top characters. You really do. And uh, mixed with workers, but if you're not gonna have heels anymore and have someone to hate, then no, I don't know. I, I mean, okay, no, no, I I agree with you about that. It's it's it's. I'm talking about. I, I don't really know how to explain it anymore. Uh, let's. I guess let's just drop it. Whatever. I'll think. Well, about you drop it. No, I keep going. Think well, we'll, think, we'll think about it later. I, I don't. I was just thinking, like you know, just, you get why did CM Punk think, get over? Why did CM Punk get over? The, why did why CM Punk get over today? No, why did he get over originally? Because he grabbed a mic and he went out on stage and it felt real and it felt like, oh my god, this is this guy. He just imploded. But it wasn't real. It wasn't real. He did. Who that came same up promo. with that? He, he, dude, he did that same sort of fucking promo in fucking Ring of Honor in 06, 05. Okay, why, would WWE, why didn't WWE let him do that a long time ago? Because they didn't know they because they came because because the MO of WWE they fucking fell fell into a corner like they did with so many fucking guys they didn't know what to do until the last fucking second and they finally go I don't fucking know let him go out there and be himself. But the fact and that that's what is, I'm not everyone, saying. But but the dude not everyone could do that. You said earlier have everyone be themselves. You want every, okay then then Shawn Michaels would have came out and said hi my name is Michael Hickenbottom. No, I'm, I'm not saying, saying that. You, I'm got, saying you, you need a little bit of a gimmick, but let them let them be these over the top characters. You know, it's it's that's what I'm saying. It's CM Punk. He gets over because of of people really believe he's CM Punk. That's what gets him over. So if uh-huh. they could do an over the top character and people can believe it, then let them fucking do it. Well, I got news for you. The CM Punk in the four three four title reign was over the fucking top, godlike. Yeah. And they never should have left that. He would. That was not himself. That was fucking extraordinary shit. Okay, I mean, you could say that he was acting himself. He was acting like fucking uh, larger than human during that reign. So I'm not going to say and that that's CM Punk acts himself. And that's, and that's he what they need to do. They need to, they need to be themselves with the volume turned up way, way the fuck up. Yeah, they need to make it extend. They need to make, they need to make them maybe an extension of themselves. Maybe they need to, maybe they need to take these guys in the corner and say, okay, what are your ideas? Just like they do in the Indies, just like they do in PWG, and they fucking allow these guys to freelance and say, okay, I got an idea. What do you want to do? I don't want you to go out there as yourself. I want you to come up with them ideas that you think of on your bed at night when it's 2 in the morning of what you want to do in your career. That's what I wish they would fucking do, because that's what the Indies seem to be doing today. WWE don't do that shit. Ask these guys for ideas. Fuck these nerd writers that fucking print shit on the Internet, and then all of a sudden they get a job 10 years later. You know, I'm talking about, like, fucking, uh, like, uh, this fucking bums that they fucking get. I'm not even talking about nerd writers of wrestling. I'm talking nerd writers of fucking TV shows that they're getting now. They're not even getting people that are in the wrestling business. They're getting people who do soap operas. 
if, yeah. you, if, if you read if you read on who they're hiring, you know what I mean? Why? And you know those guys aren't going to go up to fucking punk and say, "You have any ideas?" Fuck no, because their fucking job is irrelevant. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's yeah. that's the problem. Yeah, and and you look at, you know, it's it's sad in a way that they don't let these guys do that. It, what you're saying, and and I think. But you need to have some kind of control. But these writers, I mean, who's who knows who knows better um, about about and its themselves. own personal character than than the person who's acting the character? Yeah, the the fucking writer, they've got to write thirty storylines for thirty different fucking wrestlers. Um, you know, let them let them write their own shit and just approve it. You need to approve it. You can't just let them do whatever they want because we saw what happened in WCW. No. Everyone just runs them up. You have to have you have to have a head figure. You you have to have a head figure. But at the same time, these guys have hell of ideas. They got great ideas out there, you know. Yeah, I mean, look at look how the but that, that's how the the biggest wrestlers of all time. I'm going to say my three biggest wrestlers of all time, and I've always said this, you know, no matter what anyone's list is, the biggest wrestlers of all time are Stone Cold, The Rock, and Hulk Hogan. And those guys, not really Hogan, but The Rock and Stone Cold got over because no one knew how to fucking use them, and eventually the creative teams all just said, "Oh, let's just fucking let them be themselves." You know, just go out there and be yourself. But make it, you know, over the top and so ridiculous that, you know, you're this big fucking macho character, and that's what got over. So it's just let these guys be themselves, and I think that's how they're going to get over. But just turn the volume way up. Um, you know, we don't we don't need uh, a feed me more Ryback cartoon looking stupid muscle guy anymore. It's just not, you know. Sorry, I'm watching the King's game. I lost train train of thought. Um, <laughs> just. But, uh, it's just go, go. I understand I understand your argument about uh about letting let them be themselves. I've had that argument many, many, many fucking times. But at the same time, you can't just let them be human. You gotta have these people larger than life. You gotta make them be oh my god, fucking CM Punk just enter enter the room. Or fuck you gotta have that still. You can't have them be oh that's 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 Bob, I'm hanging with him at the bar. Mm-hmm. My point being, take these guys in a fucking corner and fucking say, Hey dude, what do you think? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm, I'm sure some promoters out there don't have the balls to do that because their egos are huge, but there are some promoters that probably do, you know, and get some pretty good fucking ideas, you know? I would love and to I, fucking take Paul Lund- I would love to take Paul London in a fucking corner of a, uh, of a fucking promotion and say, what do you want to do tonight? What do you, or yeah. have the ability to ask him what he wants to do for the next year. Can you imagine what would fucking come out of his mouth? You know what I'm trying to say? You would be fucking floored. Oh, all of a sudden you'd make him the promoter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These guys got ideas. Yeah, I got I got something I want to say right now. I, and I'm thinking better of saying it. Yeah. I probably should I probably shouldn't say it on air. I guess I'll talk about it later with you guys. But um huh. something something that could could get me in. Nah, whatever. I'm not going to say it. Go ahead. Let's uh No, 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 no. <laughs> but yeah, it it goes back to what you're saying is the problem is is that the biggest problem, it all comes back to kayfabe is broken, and they're not... What was it? Ted DiBiase was the million-dollar man from for 30 years. He was that person. Mm-hmm. And people believed he was this rich guy. Mm-hmm. He would show up to every event in a limo. He would sign it's autographs. Good. He would sign autographs like a fucking asshole. Like, I don't got time for you. You know, I, I'm I'm rich. I got all this money. And name a wrestler today that does that. They don't do that you know anymore. Crazy? They don't bring the character with them. You know what's it's crazy, it. Toby? It's crazy that you mentioned Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man. He is actually, on December 6th, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, for PWX, he's actually the special whatever attraction as the million dollar man with the belt. <laughs> to this day, he's still doing it. Yep. <laughs> And, and that's the thing is he shows up to every show and you know as a dick uh, I don't got time for you because you're all inferior to me because I have all this money and people believed who that's actually you know, who he was versus you know uh, Ryback could be a fucking asshole on TV and be this bully but yet he goes and does um, you know anti-bullying campaign you know two weeks down the road at some high school talking about how bullying is bad and how are you going to even you know, yeah. believe your what you're watching. It's just you might as well. Yeah, you might as no well not even. Exactly, you might as well not even watch this live anymore. Let's just make a fucking two-hour soap opera, show it at at one o'clock in the afternoon when all the housewives are home, and then they can fucking watch it. It's just not. 
you know, it's it's nothing anymore, basically. Um, yeah, it's, that's the problem with it is the kayfabe is broken. There's just, you know, that's why I think it was like indie wrestlers get over so well is because indie wrestlers, no matter what you guys believe it or not, they don't. They they're cool with you and they talk to you, but they seem to rarely ever break character, and that's the reason why you believe yeah. who these guys really are. You really think that yeah. these guys are like that because they don't break character because they don't they don't want to break character. They don't have to break character. Yeah, so, it's like it's it's like when you see the young bucks, like I just saw them in in New York a couple of days, and and when you meet them, yeah, they remember you and you shake hands with them and all that shit and you high five them. But motherfucker, you want them to fucking be the bucks. You want them to fucking treat you like garbage. You know what I mean? I, I, they I are. love that. They are. And, they're uh, the fuck. They never break character. Yeah. They are. They are who they and are. I it's just don't want people to be. I just don't want them to be, you know, themselves like completely. I agree with you somewhat. But completely no, because you know what I mean. I don't. I just don't want to watch a couple guys fight. I want to watch guys, you know, not superheroes, but basically out of their life. And where the fuck is Oscar? Get in here. <laughs> Get in with him. I'm here. I hear him listening. <laughs> God damn it! You argue. Oscar's watching the Kings game. Uh, I'm watching. Yeah, I'm watching the Kings game. Kings game. I'm watching the Kings game. <laughs> Shit. By the way, the Seahawks are for real people, and I hate, and I'm not a Seahawks fan. Let me just get that out there. But the Seahawks are real. Fuck you're, in the same division, uh, you're in the same division with them, so fuck them. <laughs> Ridiculous. Anyway. Hockey, hockey and baseball is my two sports. But, and wrestling. But, um, anyways, all right. I like bocce. I like bocce and curling. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, Chris, okay. I want to anyway. ask you. Today's Raw, did it seem like there's too many tag team matches? Because I, I can remember there was three tag team said matches that. today. You said that. Said that and you want to add four to the six man. Yeah. I said that, I said that last week. They, they seem to be jumbling. I, I'm fucking for I'm fucking for ramping up the tag division. Let's not just put fucking people together because their names start with R. You know what I mean? Let's, let's, <laughs> let's have some fucking teams here. Um, I, I get your point, though. There's a ton. Yeah, yeah, and another thing, you know, another another thing, you know, that there's all these reports that Sammy Callahan, they want to bring him in in a, in a tag team with somebody. They haven't said yeah. who yet, but I think that could be a smart idea if you could bring in Sammy Callahan in the tag team, and then whenever that tag team breaks up, but hopefully Sammy Callahan could be the next Shawn Michaels or next Bret Hart. You know, someone to start off as a tag team and become a big star. You know, that's what they're hoping. That's what they're trying to do. Like that's why they're doing all this tag team division. Right Here's now. a question. Who would you put him with as a tag team if that is the truth? Fuck. I mean, not, and, roster, don't just, I mean, and, and think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Don't just throw it out there. And by the way, Toby, I'm, you gotta everybody out there, please t- tweet or whatever. Find out where I could get them real American track jackets. Those are fucking awesome, and I want one. Which 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 one? Please <laughs> see them. The real Americans got track jackets with "Don't Tread on Me" and says "We the People" on the back, and they got the real Americans logo on the front. They're fucking sweet. They're black Adidas. I want one, please. Someone find them for me. Thank you. Now I'll you buy you one if you get it. <laughs> I love, I love the, uh, I, I, dude, I love, I even love their T-shirts. The one with the, the United States with the big lock in the front of it, and it says yeah, "Don't Tread on Me." Oh. Oh, it's so... I yeah, love that's the, it's the snake, don't tread on me, fucking mother. It's awesome. Oh, I love the real Americans. They're just so... Um, they, oh, it's just, there's just something about that tag team with Zeb Coulter. And even with Swagger being as bad as he... I think they finally found something for him, even though he's kind of not doing it himself. But it's just... Oh, it comes off so well on television. It's so cool. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, i got to see these jackets. Yeah. There, did they debut tonight? I don't. I don't know if they debuted... Or I just don't know. This is the first time I really fucking paid attention to the wardrobe. Um, but no, I used to off. debut their the new jackets, I believe. Cause remember, Del awesome. Sauer used to wear that stupid flag like a freaking superhero, like a superhero cape, and all that, Chris. Yeah. Hero. <laughs> fucking awesome. Now, I mean, and, and don't forget about that, Oscar. Like later on tonight, I mean, we got to think: Are they going to bring up another guy from the roster for fucking Callahan, or you know what I'm saying? Who could they fucking put him with? You know what I mean? That would make a fucking. See, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what they could do. It seems like they need to make him just be. So I think the problem with WWE is what where they're fucking up in a way is they don't. They need to. This Sammy Callahan already has a huge following in the indie scene, and a lot of indie wrestlers watch WWE. Why not just 
fucking let him be Sammy Callahan and let him go out there and wrestle. Why Why do you got to rebuild a whole new character and take all that fucking time? They're already established. Just let him fucking be Sammy. Well, you let know, him be LGR. See, the problem you is, know, you, I, could I, I, you can say it's probably bragging rights. You know, he, how can you yeah. say it? They, can't, they won't make money out of the name Sammy Callahan. They have to get the name Solomon Crow because anything that's merchandise, WWE's going to make money on that name Solomon Crow. Let's just say Chuck and Sammy Callahan is the next Hulk Hogan. Okay, he's going to make money on that name selling Solomon Crow, and he's going to give some to him. So that's basically what it is. You know, they can't make, they you know, can't make you money could, on the name Sammy Callahan. You know what you could do with that, with him, if you put him in a tag team? You could make him that quiet fucking who could go berserk at any time fucking moment partner, but his his other yeah. partner is the mouthpiece. The, his other partner, whoever that would be, would be the reassuring guy. Don't fucking get too close to this fucking guy. He'll fucking bite your head off. You know what I mean? Whoever that guy is, I mean, I think that'd be a perfect role for Sammy to be introduced. You know what I mean? Right out of the gate, he's a fucking maniac. But you're, not, you know what I mean? He don't have with doing it that way. You don't have to show it. You just fucking know it. You know what I mean? And uh, he just goes bonkers. But the thing is, if that is true, he's going to attack him. Who's that fucking guy could, you know, help him? And I mean, that's what it comes down to. Um, yeah, I'd have to yeah. look at the roster. I'd have to look at the roster. I can't think. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard to say who could t- team up with. Like, if I had to name one person, I mean, I don't know if you guys going to be a big fan of it, but if I could break up the Ascension, him and Rick Victor would be a good tag team. That's, all, that's the only person I could think of right now. But I have to really look at the roster. So bring someone else I don't up with it, basically. Yeah, basically, um, yeah. Hey, I mean, I, I, like, I have to look at the name roster. It, it, might, it, not, it might not be somebody who they signed. It was not really a big indie guy, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, as, they need to clean house soon, is what Chris keeps saying. They need to they need to gut like half the roster, all the guys that have been there for five, six years and haven't been doing shit. They need to to gut out. You know, <laughs> I'm even starting to kind of. I, you guys might kill me for this, but for the last couple of weeks, um, it seems like they have gotten so lost with the whole three MB thing. Like they've just been coming up with the stupidest crap that they're actually starting to kind of let these guys come up with yeah. ideas on their own in a way, and they're actually coming off good on television. Like, I remember yeah, I was I'm watching the whole thing. Yeah, it was like the 3MB thing. They're actually when, kind of starting to be yeah. funny. When I when they did the Freebirds thing, that sold me for life, because I'm a humongous Freebirds mark from the 80s, and, <laughs> and Terry Gordy is one of my favorites of all time. But, when, like you said that last week, um, when 3MB did Freebirds, I'm sold. They, they, keep, their, they keep their contracts. <laughs> <That's about Yeah. it. laughs> but, you know, for um, a while people there, like it's... Barrett... People like Barrett, I agree. Um, You're looking at Barrett I'd most managers. I'd even say fucking Ziggler. I mean, you know me. I've been saying that for a year about Ziggler. I mean, Los Matadors, uh, you know, you can probably throw in Wade Barrett. I would say any guy from the original NXTs, uh, the, when it was like a contest, um, you know, anyone who hasn't done anything, cut all them. Um, you need to get rid of, like, uh, JTG... Um, yeah. Kurt Hawkins, Ryder, all these guys, and uh, it's, and don't even I don't want to hear anyone I don't want to, any tweets or mm, Zach Ryder. Yeah, oh, yeah, fuck, yeah. fuck all you guys. He has well, here's the thing. I think that's here's the thing. Yeah. Already, Toby, I agree. The Zach Ryder thing, but I I agree with Toby. Thank you got to get rid of all these idiots. And, <laughs> and here's the you know, thing, though. Well, why, why and here's the thing. Monster? It's a good thing. It's a good thing that I think if they're let go, I understand their fucking paycheck. I get all that. I'm talking about they'll actually have a chance to fucking reinvent themselves while they're young. Yeah. And actually go fucking try something else and try something for a promotion and maybe, maybe you'll get over. Fucking I mean, more. You know what I'm saying? It's not like indie wrestling's dead or there's nowhere to go. You're going to become a bigger star. Like when we went to QPW Oscar and we saw uh, Sh- um, Shad Gaspar, formerly yeah. Shad Gaspar, whatever his name is. We saw him wrestle. Um, who did he wrestle? He wrestled Paul London. Willie Mack. And they, I thought he wrestled Paul London. No, it was Willie Mack. Time. He beat Willie Mack. The first, the first time. Yeah, he wrestled Willie Mack. I thought he wrestled Paul London. No, did he wrestle Willie Mack the second time? Did you go to both of them or only the first one? Only the first one. Yeah, he wrestled Willie Mack. He beat Willie Mack because I remember I, I Who both did Paul said that London? on. Paul, the fuck, Paul London wrestled. Was, was that really for what show? For oh, what show? Was it Brian Cage he wrestled? No, I don't what know. Show? I look it up. The QPW uh, show, though, when they have like two. Oh, 
Yeah, but anyway, it, it, it just don't. Yeah, it's not 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 a big deal. Anyways, um, but w- Sh- I remember Chad Gaspar put on a fucking awesome match, and I was like, "Holy shit!" He never even showed half of his potential in WWE. Is what he's showing now. He put on. Well, an unbe- I'm like, no wonder why they tried to build this guy up. He was fucking well, he was unbelievable. Their their matches were less time. They had less time in the ring than than their fucking introductions. You know what I'm saying? So that's partly had something to do with it. You know, it's it's rough. It's rough to get TV time, you know. That shit's timed. That's the thing about NXT, um, and, and that shit's just... That promotion is basically not just to prepare, pre- prepare you what to do in the ring. It's prepare you to work on a timed basis. You know I mean? You just can't come to fucking WWE and go, fuck it, I'm going to put a 40-minute match. Fuck you guys. Nah, they break you. They show no, you no, how no. to do it in 12... They show, they show you how to do it in 12 minutes, 5 minutes, you know. That's the only, how they do it. The only time you have a 40... 40- the only time you ha- you'll be in the forty minute match if you get lucky if you're either in a yeah. main event or WrestleMania or you're in a fucking Iron Man match. That's the only way you'll get a forty minute match in the or, WWE. Or, or you're lucky to have a match with Daniel Bryan on Raw a couple months uh, about a year ago. Remember he was having fucking forty minute matches, hour matches, and he was wrestling four times a night. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. But uh, yeah, I mean that's basically what NXT's for. I mean, all, you know, of course you go there to hone your skills, but they basically Did, show yeah. you how to do it. But do guys like El Generico really need any honing? Like, do they really... They don't need He's any never polishing. He's never been on TV. He's but never been on TV since HD he, Matt. He doesn't need any polishing. It's just... It's the, you don't well, go out there and do what the same you do. Time, Toby... In the same time, Toby, he's no longer El Generico. He has to develop this Sami Zayn character yeah, exactly. now. He's Sami Zayn now. And why he, wait I hate to say it. time? I hate to say it. He's Sami Zayn. But here's the thing, too. He has never really been consistently on a TV show. That's the difference. It, yeah, he was on Ring of Honor HDNet for a while, but he's never been on a fucking TV show, night in, night out, that he's going to end up being. And I guarantee you that's yeah. some of the shit they're showing. And, and I bet you Ring of Honor did TV. And I bet you that you know? time Ring of Honor, they didn't even tell him what to do. Like, okay, I want you to have a 40 no. minutes match. No, no, no. They, they did whatever the fuck they want. Even, he really honor he actually edited matches. Like example that like like two weeks ago they had a six what was it no actually like eight eight yeah. man tag which it took seventy yeah, it minutes gory. and they had to edit out they added some ma- parts of the match that match on the TV so what they did was on the screen the bottom of the screen said you want to see the full match you gotta go to ringofhonor dot com so that's what they it's did like on that TV show it's like it's like, when you go down there it's like film school. They they teach yeah. you how to fucking react to cameras, facials, and stuff like that. When to look at, uh, when to know that you're on the big screen to show your fucking face and really grit your fucking teeth, you know, and show and sell it. I mean, that's basically what it is. And and do this fucking fantastic shit in six minutes, because that's what he's going to get when he first comes to the roster. He's going to get six minutes. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to come out and do El Generico lay and, and then come out with a fucking shebang match he had with Cesaro. You know, he's going to get fucking six, seven minutes. But it's, WWE is, right now, it seems like they're hurting for talent. Uh, top talent. They have Daniel Bryan, they have CM Punk, and, I mean, who else do they have right now? I'm not going to count John Cena and Randy Orton. Bray's coming up. Dean Ambrose? Yep. Dean Ambrose. What what Bray Wyatt's promo, promo tonight? Yeah, but Dean Ambrose isn't a top. He might be a top talent to us, but he's not. He's not established. He will be. Yeah, he but that's what I'm be. saying. He will Why? be. Yeah, that's, I think he will. Be. Bray Wyatt exactly tonight. That's exactly my point. That's exactly Bray my Wyatt point. Bray Wyatt tonight turned a corner. Bray Wyatt turned tonight. Uh, turned a corner tonight, just by that promo of where they're going to go with this guy. He's gonna. They're going to shoot him to the moon too. And 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 that's look what they, and look what they almost did with him. I mean, Ooh, with the fire mark. I mean, look what they look what they almost did with him as far as his his first his first go. Um, with Bray, yeah, with Bray, yeah, that fire match was ridiculous and stupid. No, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about um, way oh, Husky. Husky. Husky, Husky, Husky Harris, Harris, Michael McGillicuddy. That's what I, that's what I'm referring to. I mean, look what they almost did. But you know, it's my point is why are they wasting time? Like, okay, so think about it. They it took him how long has he been wrestling now for him? Like four years? It took him four years to establish a fucking character. Are you kidding me? Like, let these fucking guys just be. Let them be El Generico. Let them be Sammy Callahan. Why waste time? Just 
take them now, throw them on fucking television, have, you know, I guarantee you 30% of the people are already going to know who they are. They never have so, done that, yeah. They, they they've need, never have they done need that. To stop doing that. Stop wasting they, time. They're never going to stop doing it. They didn't do it with Cactus Jack at the beginning. They didn't do it with Stone Cold at the beginning. They didn't do it with anybody at the beginning. Yeah, but Stone That's Cold was, how it was. He was the ringmaster. My point is, they don't do it with anybody, and they're not gonna. This is a company that told Austin Aries to take a hike. This is a company that yep. told Daniel Bryan. This is a company that told Daniel Bryan in 2002 or 2003, sorry, we don't need your services no more, and fucking threw him out of fucking developmental. This is a company that just throws fucking people away because they don't know what to do with them at the beginning. So there's no way that they're going to say, Sammy Callahan, get in there. Generico, we know you're awesome. Get in there. They're not going to do it. They're not homegrown talent. And you I know, know they're not going to, but I'm saying they need to do it. It's, it's They're not, well... Your argument, what you're saying right now, is what I said 20 years ago. And it makes perfect the, sense. It's still the same. It's still the same that when fucking, uh, when Mike Rotundo came from, I'm just throwing a fucking name out there. When Mike Rotundo fucking came up from NWA, they made him IRS. They're going to switch him up. <laughs> yes, I just pulled out a Mike Rotundo fucking statement, which, which, <laughs> leads us back to, which leads us back to Bray Wyatt. That's his father. Anyway. Sometimes he could take two uh, tries, like Husky Harris and Ray White looks like he's going to work. Austin from the Ringmaster to Stone Cold Steve Austin Network. Rocky from Rocky well, Maya via to The Rock. Yeah. Yes. Well, guess what? If you, you came to a fucking PWG, if you came to a PWG show right now with a Husky Harris shirt, you'd get the biggest pop of the night. <laughs> Don't tell me you wouldn't. <laughs> i got to see what you guys are talking about. When did this happen? Tonight? What? This Husky Ray Wyatt Harris thing? Place? Yeah, it happened tonight. Yeah. Should we just Check tell out what happened? Just tell you what it, yeah, just no, I think you, you, could, you could explain to him more. Go ahead, Chris. Tell, tell him. Basically. Why is it that epic? Should I, should I watch it? Should I watch it before you tell me? Like, should I? No, nah, no. Nah, it's awesome okay. either way. Okay. Um, basically, Daniel Bryan got kidnapped, and they're the worst kidnappers in the world because he got away. And he wrestled a match against Eric Rowan, which was a great match. Which, by the way, Eric Rowan and Luke Harper are awesome workers. Anyway. Um,. After the match, uh, Danny Bryan got the wind. Um, Danny Bryan's walking up to the fucking ramp. Lights go out, spotlight on Bryan. Bray Wyatt's on the fucking big screen. And he comes up with this fucking crazy sick promo, which I say every week. He doesn't have any cue cards anywhere near him. And he's fucking speaking, you know, in tongue, you know, Bray Wyatt tongue. And he's basically trying to convince uh, uh, Daniel Bryan to switch sides and come with him and take over the world, sort of like the Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker moment, and uh, and basically saying these people don't understand you, I do. So they're going to go that route. Hmm. Okay, so it was it was mainly the promo that got him over, not really. Who? It was the promo that did it, not nothing else, is what you're saying. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mean, they're they're making him they're making him again a larger life figure. Who they could go on for years with this guy. They keep this is a character that will work. This is this is a you know, I don't know if anyone agrees, but they could go on for years with him. But why? Yes, yeah, they can. I believe so. Remember we talked uh, last week. He could. He's a perfect opponent for the Undertaker. WrestleMania yeah. 31. Him and Undertaker should get it on. If, yeah. if Undertaker had one we, more last match, Bray we even talked so much about it. We even talked about it so much, Toby, that we had the match. We booked the match, basically, like move by move. <laughs> we talked about that for a while. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I'm definitely going to watch thing, it now. Okay, another thing I, I've been, was buzzing around Twitter is the, um, the whole Sincata thing, where they're saying they believe Epico is playing the Sincata character again, which it looks like it's Epico again because Sincata somehow got the tattoo now. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but That's right. why is the That's right. why is why is Hunico playing the Sincata character again? Hunico or Epico? Uh, what, what's or going what? Crazy. I saw that tattoo and I didn't put one and one together. That's crazy. That's right. Yeah. So what is Sincata? And, and, what's, and, what's the rumor about what and he, he went over? Okay, okay, okay. And so Toby, basically, he went uh, over Del Rio. He, yeah, he went over to Del Rio. But Toby one. basically put his. Basically, this, this is what happened. Remember when Hudico was Sin Cara at one point? Yeah. Yeah. He, that was because um, he failed the drug test, right? Something like that. So, yeah, he took his place for a bit. Now, um, he 
he, he came back again as uh, Sin Cara, but not not acknowledging that anything with, that he's Hunico. It's basically, we all know it's Hunico because you, you recognize how he looks with the Sin Cara, you, Alfred, but somehow he has a tattoo on his shoulder. <laughs> they didn't mention that at all. Yes. But then, and now that you and mentioned it, all, now that you mentioned it, now that you mentioned it, the lights were real dim tonight, too. Yeah. <laughs> if you think about it. Real oh, dim. Yep. Why are they and he went to Rio. with that Sin Cara character? It's kind of weird. It's you know, it's funny, last it. week, that's funny, there was reports saying that they're going to have Sin Cara against Rey Mysterio. They're bringing that up again for WrestleMania. They want to have that freaking, um, oh, that freaking um, match again. They want to have that Sin Cara versus Rey Mysterio match again. Mask they, they've mask? had a... Hmm. So they can pull off his mask again and see the Tunico? <laughs> They've I don't had know, a boner for that match for a while. They've had a boner for that for a I'm, while. I'm actually trying to look at reports. If, if anything happened to the real Sin Cara? Like, what, did he do, Did he get in trouble again? Or what the fuck's going on? Why is Hunico playing Sin Cara again? Why is he playing the Sin Cara character again? That's what I'm trying to find out. What if, it, what if it's simple as... What if it's simple as they wanted Sin Cara to go over Del Rio so much, but Del Rio was like, fuck that. I'm not... Sin Cara's not going over. And then they were like, well, what if it's Hunico? And he's like, all right. <laughs> You know what I mean? What if it came down yeah. and he wasn't fucking laying down to the real Sin Cara? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'm serious. What the you know fuck what? is going on? <laughs> oh, yeah, and that was... Uh, I'm knows? still, I'm still kind of uh, up in the air about everyone talking about that. Beck, oh, the, the fucking heat that Del Rio was legitimately pissed off because... Sankara dislocated his finger, and I'm still up in the air about that. I don't know if that was... I mean, he really dislocated his hand. You you saw yeah. he dislocated his finger for reals, and the way the Del Rio made that big stink about it in the ring, whether that was legit or not, I, I'm still well, you know what? up in the air about. That did come That did come at a time where Del Rio was really getting legit beat up in the ring, especially, remember, with the black eye. He just got beat up during the weekend, the WrestleMania weekend. He was taking some stiff matches, and I think maybe those might have, if it was true, it, probably from a little bit of frustration that he had towards fucking this guy who fucking lays down when his fucking, maybe he didn't know how serious the hand injury was. You know what I mean? Maybe he just fucking flipped out. So this motherfucker's going to lay down and quit the match now, you motherfucker, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, but I agree with what you're saying, you know, could have been anything. Yeah, I, been, I, that's been a, true, what you're saying, Chris. Could have, could have been a fucking could be set up for the angle that they just pinned him. You know what I mean? Uh, that that was mind boggling. That Sin Cara went over Del Rio. That's still fucking crazy. So they're throwing yeah, a couple you. Of That's fucking a mystery. Yeah. Yeah, we, we gotta find out next week, but or maybe SmackDown, but or maybe they they might report something pretty soon. Or you guys could check out WrestlingHeads dot com. Maybe we'll report yeah. something pretty soon, yeah. I don't know if you guys uh, check out the website. Have you checked out the website, uh, Toby? Yeah, our, Word, our WordPress blog. Sorry, <laughs> go ahead. Awesome. Hey, po- hey. Yeah, it's an awesome it's, website. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, and uh, it seems to be going over where a lot of people, a lot of people are already fucking showing love for it. And uh, I'm very proud to be part of it. And you know, obviously, I'm fucking all over it. So, you know. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. The, guy, the guy who did it did a did a. Uh, it does look great. I will say, um, he definitely did a good job on it. It looks uh, the website looks very professional. It's it's. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I don't. Uh, I don't have any complaints about it. It looks it looks really good. It doesn't uh, remind it you of the. No, I was asking. Oh. Doesn't remind you of the WWE dot com website back in the Attitude Era because that. that Fans and everything kind of reminds me of it. Like, oh shit! I don't know if you guys remember how the website looked back in the Attitude Era. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, yeah our website reminds me of that. So I was like, holy yeah. shit! But the thing <laughs> is, I, I think I think it also has the ability to show um, a lot. Uh, you know what I mean? A lot of different things that a lot of people are not doing. And uh, I, I think honestly, I'm not just saying it because I'm all, you know part of it, but. Uh, I, I can sense that that um, this has promised, man, to be different. 
and just different is good. You know what I mean? Not copying anybody. And I think out of the gate, you realize that it's not copying anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. the website looks good. I'm just, uh, uh, I don't know if it was, I mean, it, just to let everyone know, I don't know if it was from the t-shirt money or whatever that we did, there was uh, a lot of money spent on the website that I don't, uh, I don't particularly agree with spending that much money as how much money it fucking costs to build that awesome of a site. Um, but that was my only complaint about it was that it was a little expensive, but uh, whatever. I mean, if, if it comes out, if if the, it's not really what we think, it's just if people like it and they want to go to it, that's that's what matters. So if it if people, if we get traffic and people like it, then, you know, that's then it was worth it. Well, if not, then it wasn't. But I think I think what it's going to come down to, Toby, is um, we all have very different ideas, and which is great for websites and great for podcasts. And I think that I think that we could get a lot of shit out there on that website because you know there's a lot of good ideas that we can come up with to put on there. And I think if we fucking you know work hard on the website, you know blogging and this that and the other, I think you know I think we can put a lot of good shit out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it looks great. It's yeah. done. It's done with WordPress, so I mean I'm very familiar with it. It's very. It's going to be very easy for mm-hmm. us to get out to get out content to the fans at a at a very easily easy pace. So I mean it should be just as easy as any breaking news should be up on the website within you know with very quickly and in a very organized fashion. So it's yeah. it's definitely done correctly. Um, yeah, and- but. We'll and see. do shit you always wanted to do. And do shit, and this goes to Oscar, goes to Skits, goes to you, everybody. Do shit you've always wanted to do your whole fucking life. Here it is. You got a website to do it on. You know what I mean? And uh, fucking people will fucking go on it. I mean, that's just it. I'm not just, you know, just telling the truth. I mean, you know, do what you want, basically. Yeah, yeah I, I, saw your little, I saw your little blog about New Japan Pro Wrestling, which I believe that was it. Or the Japanese yeah, I, wrestling. I have, a, I have a few on there already. Yeah, I already. But, I like I said, already. I'm on. I'm on vacation um, right now, and I leave tomorrow. I go back home. So when I get home, I'll be doing you know pretty much every promotion I could possibly think of. Where are you at right now? I'm in Florida. Oh, okay. my father. And uh, so I'm, you know, I mean, and, 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 and we're not just going to cover fucking, uh, you know. You know, WWE and TNA, we're going to cover fucking promotions all around the world. Indies fucking from America and how, and if even WWE is going to get covered as well. I mean, house shows, whatever the fuck. I mean, if anybody wants to fucking know what's going on in terms of wrestling and, uh, on the planet, they're basically going to, got to have a home. You know what I'm saying? I want yeah. people to fucking put, I want people to put our website on their fucking, on our, on our fucking toolbar up top. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's, that's my fucking goal. And I want to fucking, help achieve this website. I want people to have that fucking quick link. <laughs> you know. So. What I what I'm hoping that this eventually spawns down and I'm pretty sure uh WordPress can do this fairly easily is eventually break this down into having a wrestling heads app to where people don't have to use the internet browser to access us anymore. To where we'll just yeah. be right off the home page and, and break it down uh into an app. Uh you know, to where all the news just heads right to the right to the phone. Um and they, we can even have alerts and stuff that that happens, you know. If you want to have an alert, and we can just have like, you know, kind of like how to. Cool. Yeah, I agree with it. Here's the kind of thing: it's cool, Toby. You go to events, and you know, you do what you do uh, on the side. I'm not going to go into. And um, uh, uh, Oscar goes to events. Skits goes to events. I go to events. And you could you could show your what you just not just the group, but you what you personally, you know. Thought about a specific uh, uh, night or show or or showcase your personal pictures. You know what I'm saying? It's this yeah. Is your, this is basically an extension of yourself, and I yeah. think that's going to come across for a while because we all travel and see different promotions, and I think it's going to be cool yeah. in the end. And and I agree with you, right? That it's perfect because I I notice a lot of the other um, big name like if you look at the phone market, like uh, as far as apps go. You know, it's not just one guy that's running that app, you know, because if it was just one person running the news website, it would suck. 
there is, you know, 10 to 15 different corresponders that are posting shit up all the time, which is what makes it so breaky. And, and that's what if, and that's what you're saying is everyone has access to this, you know, so it's, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be very easy for us to get content out yeah. fairly quickly. And also, and also, this I honestly now don't feel like I'm wasting my time watching every fucking promotion in Japan and America. I actually could fucking put it to some good use. <laughs> I'm you not mean wasting, wasting my time. Your like, time. I thought you like it. Yeah. Well, you know. What <laughs> I thought you enjoyed. You know it. what I'm saying. You know, I'm, you yeah. know what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not wasting my time watching pro wrestling Noah TV at three fifty in the morning. I could actually <laughs> actually say something about it. <laughs> yeah, another thing you can. You know. Yeah. Another thing about this website, it links us to the podcast. Like, if anybody wants to listen to, like, past last past six episodes of this, they could link to it right yes. there. And and if they, it also has another link where it goes to where they, our listeners can listen to, you know, past shows. Like, when we had Headbanger Thrashers on, P.P. Ray. Mm-hmm. But I like, the, I, like, I like the little screen right here, the little box screen that it has the, the last six episodes. Yeah, we just did. So... Yeah. So anybody that's missed our show, you can like the last show, you can go on there in the, on our website and de- there you go. You can listen to us. And for fucking and two plus, hours is bullshit. <laughs> and plus the the section of the top ten, which will be I guess coming up next week. You know what I mean on the website. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's going to be weekly or whatever. How you guys are going to do it? But you got I'm going to do it every and, Sunday. I'm, I'm going to do it every yeah. Sunday. I'm going to look from. From Sunday to Monday, if any wrestling event from Sunday to Saturday I went to, or w- from watching WWE, Ring of Honor, TNA, whoever's the top mm-hmm. ten that impresses me, I'm going to put them in my top ten. That's going to be what it is, what I saw the whole week. Mm-hmm. Not just, okay, Ooh. he's my favorite right now, and this and that. No, no, I'm just putting what I see the whole week. You know, like, example, um, uh, Toby, your buddy, Eli Ar- Arafly, he could have been in my top ten this week. He could have been if we did mm-hmm. our top ten last week. Yeah, if I could have oh, yeah. been like maybe six or seven, you know. And the guy's fucking oh, amazing, and all you guys got to, got to look him up. I mean, the guy's <laughs> fucking Absolutely. amazing. Toby knows him personally. Yeah. Chaos, Toby knows his guy personally. Fucking yeah. pumped him. When Gareth yeah. was on, he, t- hi- he talked highly of him. And, 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 and here's the thing, man. Do, don't have any outside influence. Make it yourself. You know what I'm saying? Fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fuck whatever whatever you believe, right? That's your top ten. Fuck yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's my top Fuck ten. Fuck it. And, and and any of our listeners that wants to give me shit about it, go ahead. Yeah. Hit me up yeah, on Twitter. Want you to. Six, three, two. Give me shit. I don't give a fuck. I'll tell you why. Yeah. I put, who I put in my top ten. So, yeah. All you That's prankers what, out there, what? all you prankers out there that want to talk shit on us on the show, hey, man, why don't you talk shit to us on our fucking website? Come to the website. Yeah, who cares? I mean, yeah, yeah seriously, it's like we're not going to get all... Like anti, you know, we're not going to filter out all the fucking cyber bullies. We don't give a fuck, you know. Seriously, call mm-hmm. call us a cocksucker for for having John Cena in the top ten. Whatever, <laughs> dude. You know, that's that's what wrestling is. We you agree to you you everyone disagrees with everyone. That's that's what makes wrestling awesome. So I want to know every wrestler. I want to know if you have a wrestler that you feel that belongs on there. That's why I asked Drake Younger that question. Was there a fucking wrestler that you've seen in the last six months that blew you away? He fucking rattled them off. Well, all you people out there that listen to the show and get on the website, that, here's your chance. There's a little lead comment thing right after what we write. Give it a shot, you know? Yeah, I believe you can even register an account um, if they have that feature enabled. If it's not, it should be enabled. You can go ahead and rest, register a wrestle, uh, an account with Wrestling Heads and uh, become a, you know, become your own personality on there and leave comments or do whatever you want. Um, if, that, if that feature is not enabled, it should be enabled. Uh, we need to we need to fix that if it's not. Uh, but yeah, that'd be pretty cool. You can go ahead and register an account, and you know, Captain Comic Con is the only person that I think he can be Captain Comic Con and go ahead and, and leave, uh, you know, his comments yeah. on whatever he wants and stuff like that. So um, yeah. Right. Before we go it. to overtime, I just wanna before we go to overtime, I just let's let's give our listeners our Twitter info and yeah, yeah. and uh, buy our T-shirts. Go to freaking www. ProWrestlingTees.com and buy our T-shirts. And I guess Skits made a deal that if you're if you have your own podcast show and if you buy our T-shirts, he'll buy your guys' T-shirts. But, there you uh, go. Yeah. So Toby, you want to give out your Twitter? No. Go ahead. <laughs> Good. 
Okay, yeah, uh, mine's, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, it's ROH code, and it's good to have Toby back tonight. <laughs> yeah, he's all excited, Toby's back. Uh, you guys can follow me at Sinister632, same one on, on Instagram. Uh, and do me a favor, I need five more followers to get to 400, so please follow <laughs> me on Twitter. <laughs> I got I'll more fucking more followers on Instagram than, than, than Twitter. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> <laughs> Just give I'm, me five I'm more catch, followers. I'm catching, I get five hundred. You're catching. You're catching. Come on, follow me. I want to. I want to get more followers in, in Mr. Ring of Honor code right there. Um, and don't no, miss out. I, well, I guarantee you. Have, I guarantee you, I'll never have four hundred. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You don't. You don't want to miss out Wednesday. We have Air Fox and David Jackson. So to Wednesday, peace, well, and we'll be going overtime. We'll, we'll just now. kind of go until we get cut off. I guess. Yeah. You know, yeah. sometimes they cut us off right away. Sometimes we go for a half yeah. hour. We'll just yeah, keep going, I guess, been, until we cut us off. Recently, they've been cutting us at, like, one thirty-seven my time, so... Either way, go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, we can get... If you really want to get Eli Everfly on the show, I train with the guy every Saturday, so... Uh, I think it's way too early. I mean, I, I don't know, I gotta... I think it's too early for you know anybody. I think it's even early to the too early for that guy. Was he Spike McLean? Spike McLean. I don't even know who you're talking about. Um, uh, James, dude with the spiky hair. He trained in Santino's. Spike McLean, James. That's his. Spike. That's his M- yeah, McLean. James. His real name is James. Who the fuck are you? But talking? I'll tell you. I, he, he knows you. <laughs> I brought up your name. Like, oh yeah, the guy who wants to be the referee. It's a dude, white dude, spiky hair. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He hangs yeah, out that with uh, dude. Josh, right? Yeah, that guy. Oh, yeah, 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 he's cool. But what the, what's he doing? I don't even know what he's doing, dude. Well, he, only tra- he, he only shows okay, up, I- like, maybe, like, once every two months on Saturday. So, I mean, I very I very rarely see him. My, my class is on Saturdays, and a lot of the other guys train on Mondays and Wednesdays because yeah, Saturdays... Yeah, he does what he does Mondays and Wednesdays, and he was... um doing a little security work at Santino's last week and AWS yeah, yeah. this past Saturday. Yeah. No, no, no. He's not even like... Um, the thing about Eli Everfly is he's already kind of a little bit established. He's already done work outside of Santino's. Um, yeah, I know that. And he's... Uh, oh, man. You know what? How I, old is I, he? He's, he looks 16. Uh, he's like 19 or 20. Um, he tried to get me to buy him beer the other day and I wouldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I didn't break the law. Um, but it, he, he, the thing about him is that I'm like, I, I'll, I'll, I tell him all the time, I'm like, dude, your match is awesome. And he's like, he's like, thanks. He's like, I don't know. I just didn't like this or he, he's, I, I just, he, I don't, I don't want to speak too much for, for him, but it's just, dude, Eli, Eli Everfly, you're awesome. And dude, just seriously, like. He portrays himself as as being that person. He's fucking. He's and like you said, he's, he's one of the people that when you go to a Santino Brothers show, if you don't really remember too many things, you remember the Eli Everfly character, and you go, "Wow, Eli Everfly, man, he was pretty cool. He was awesome. You know, he just the way he comes." 